Hey everyone, Kyle once again, and I just want to say uh, happy new happy new year, you know, happy 2000, 2015, you know, and didn't do my New Year's Eve video yesterday, but I just was busy, you know, but so I figured why I didn't do it on the first day of 2015, you know, so once again, happy new year, you know, and I did my uh, top 13 best films of 2014, and I enjoy all those films, you know. And now it's time for me to review my top 11 worst films of 2014. Well, well, there's three, there's there's three of the other films though, but I'll put that like like I did for my in the, in the, in the, my other video, my best films. You know, I did some honorable honorable mentions. You know, films that I did not include on my list, but I still liked. Well, here's the ones I'm putting in my dishonorable mentioning that doesn't doesn't deserve it to be on my list even though but but yeah so this is my top 14 you know it was straight off the right out of the bat I just wanted to say just screw all these movies you know all all these films they all suck you know they're all truly were all pieces of shit you know but but that's it. But let's get to all of them. And I don't have and for my, um, from for, for. But I don't have this. I don't have that many DVDs. So because, but I don't have that many of them because of those little ones. I just don't want. I don't want to get though. If I do get them, yeah, I'll get it for the sake of my. Well, I want to say, will they deserve to be my be in my collection? Well, because all I do is keep on expanding my collection. You know, because I do have a lot of good films. I do have some bad films. You know, so but. You know, but that's that's just another time though. But if I do get them, I'll take them. If I if I get if I get if I get them to get them as like um for free or as gifts, you know. Uh, but oh well, just the same way for my just for that matter. Just let's get to, let's get to my um dishonorable mentionings. There's only there's only three of them, and these uh, these three here were the big were the big uh were big hits over the summer, you know. And there are made they made a lot of money. They're on the top um, ten of uh, highest grossing films of 2014. The first one I want to say is, is the first one I, I want to quickly say is Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. Did I like Dawn of the Planet of the Apes? You know, I I I, I hated I hated the I hated the first I hated the first one Rise of the Planet of the Apes. You know, it was long, boring. The vi the, the visual effects of the apes. We're not good whatsoever, because that's that's a film I could I would complain about. You know, those those effects of films get the praise. You know, while uh, uh, while uh, another uh, film uh, that's completely underrated that film gets a lot of shit talk. You know, and that's Congo. You know, we'll post our story right there. You know, and the 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 the, 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 the effects on the gorillas they get a lot of sh they get a lot of shit. You know, because you know because they're they're practical costumes. You know, suits. You know, by made by Stan Winston. You know. Those get a lot of trash talk, you know, but the visual effects gets in the Rise of the Planet of the Apes gets praised, and this one here, Dawn of the Planet, gets praised as well, you know. This and this and this Dawn of the Planet gets made over seven hundred million. It's the highest grossing film in, in the whole entire franchise, you know. Uh, the lead was the was this guy who was one of the bad guys in uh, uh, White House Down, you know, and uh, Gary Oldman is in, but not for a little bit though. Which I did not mind him because I like Gary Oldman as an actor, though I did not mind him in the film, you know, because he was not in it for that much, though, like it was in the trailer. But yeah, he was only guy, probably one of the only human characters that I did not mind. But still, all the other human characters that I do not give a shit about, though they don't care about the 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 about the gorillas or the apes, you know. I I I did not I did not like Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. It was too bad. It's directed by Matt Reeves, who directed Cloverfield. You know, Cloverfield is a much better movie than Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. But I just, I, I did not, I didn't like a screw Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. And of course, that's going to get another, it's going to get another sequel, which is what with my, with my brother, he jokes about calling it, um, uh, Rise, Rise, the Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. You know, that's what he jokesly calls it. Okay, well, moving on. That's well. That's the one I first dishonorable mentioning. Next one is, next one is um, Amazing Amazing Spider-Man Two. 
I never, I know, I never liked, I never liked the the for the first reboot film, the first Amazing Spider-Man. You know, after it was after with the Sam Raimi Spider-Man three, you know. Then the curse they when they make when they make um they made do like a do a reboot of it, you know. Um. Never, never liked it. The, the, one of my favorite, um, especially one of my favorite uh, Spider-Man villains, which is the Lizard, which was horrendous, you know. Andrew Garfield's, I never, never, never cared for, you know. Um. Um. What was it? Um. So all the the bull, the bull, the, some of the bull crap stuff they had in the film, you know, um, like um. What the how many times that Peter Parker kept taking off his mask, you know, and the visual effects, you know, that the, uh, the lizard was horrendous, you know, they looked like dog crap, you know, and well, that was the only character I, I did like was in that first, the first one was Dennis Leary, you know, I like because I, I like him as an actor, and I thought he was a uh, fine as the um, was a Captain Stacy, you know, well, also maybe also uh, what was it, um, Emma Stone, I didn't mind as well, and that was one of the other good thing, one of the one of the minor uh, things I liked about this new one, the Maze Department Two, Emma Stone was fine as well, you know. But the film was was not good either, you know. Of course, it was the the the, the villain of you know Electro Lily, Jamie Foxx, you know, falls into fall into CGI um, uh, electric eels. That's how he becomes Electro. Now the the, the the stuff in the trailer where it shows that um. Well, the Apollo Giamatti is the rhino, how he battles it, and of course that's like all the, the film ends just with Spider-Man throwing the uh, sewer lid at the me mechanical rhino, you know. I don't want to see no more. I don't. I, I'm not looking forward. I'm not looking forward to seeing the Sinister Six, you know. Two two of these new Amazing Spider-Man films, and I don't want to see it. The, um, I, I don't want to look. I'm not interested in seeing the Sinister Six. So, Made in Spider-Man 2 sucks. Next one, this one I said that, um, this one I thought was well, probably why I said this before, but the next one is the, the last of the dishonorable mentionings X Men Days of Future Past. I don't know if people, well, probably a lot of people like the film, though, you know, but I I have absolutely had, I had it with the X Men films after, um, with the X-Men Origins Wolverine, then X-Men Days of Future, uh, X-Men First Class, and then the Wolverine, you know. But, uh, I'll, I'll be always, I'll, I always, I'll probably always said that Hugh Jackman was never that, was never, was never bad as Wolverine. He was never that bad, you know. He was, he, I always, always, uh, enjoyed his, like, like his performance, you know, is, uh, as Wolverine, though. But it's just the film, this is the film itself, you know. Um, I know, I'm never a fan of Jennifer Lawrence, who played Mystique, you know, he, did not, did not like her in X Men First Class, you know, and I, I, did, I did not like the younger version. I did not like the younger versions of Professor X. You know, I didn't like James uh, McAvoy. You know, I did not like uh, Michael Fassbender's younger uh, Eric. You know, Magneto. You know, and I didn't, I didn't never, never like the younger version of uh, what's his name, Nicholas um, something, who played the younger version of uh, uh, Henry. Um, Hank McCoy, you know, uh, Beast or whatever, you know. Did did not just never care for the, those younger versions of the because I did, I did not like the X Men First Class and I didn't and the the main the main my, my, the care the younger versions I still didn't I still did not like in Days of Future Past. Did not like the did not care about the Quicksilver character, you know, which like I still was a, in, in Avengers Age of Ultron, you know, Aaron Taylor Johnson maybe will probably be like a slight bit better. You know, because we'll and give that one one more chance. Because, but I'll talk about Aaron Taylor Johnson soon, though. But later. But anyway, just um, what are the ones that uh, where's the thing is um, um, uh, where was I? I can't, I can't remember what what where was remember of the film because I still guys I only saw it once. And I can't barely remember the film. Uh. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, I can't remember. Oh, well, um, it was one. Of, what was the one? Well, the the celestial. I remember seeing the, the the celestials. They were not good looking as well, though. The 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 one like the brief appearance in um, what was it? Um, the last stand. You know how the way the celestial look would look better than 
this one and the these this one in here, you know. Well, there's more than one of them though. Created by uh the what was a what was the character that the Peter Dinklage's character was playing? Oh, well, I thought that is uh, didn't mind. Well, maybe it was another thing. I did not mind Peter Dinklage though, but um, this still didn't save the movie, you know. But X Men Days of Future Past. Did I? I, that's not what I, thought. I have no interest in seeing Apocalypse. Okay, I have no interest in seeing X Men Apocalypse. I know my 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 brother. He likes Days of Future. Past. Days of Future Past, you know, he, he doesn't understand why, I, I, he doesn't understand why I don't like this film. His rights, but it's my opinion, you know, but. I don't want to see no more X-Men films. Now, 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 getting to my uh, top 11, now, I only got a few DVDs right here, and, and just for this, just, um, I'm sure some people will uh, have done, have, have all these people, have some of these films on their worst list, you know, because I don't know how how many people have done their top worst, whatever, you know. But this is my own personal list, and if some my if some of them may be similar to the ones in the whoever's list, but I'm not. I would say I'm not copying anything, you know. But I just it may turn out some some people's lists, you know. But this is my list that I, that I put this in film. I the first the first though the first uh. My my first three were no problems. Just the other films I had I had to give some thought to think about to put which order is like worse than whatever you know. So this is my own personal list. It's my and it's all in my opinion of a list you know. So so let's get down to it. Now number eleven that I did number eleven I did not first one I did not like um, was was Sin City a Dame to Kill for or Sin City two you know. Now the film. Now this one, I this is the film I, do, I don't barely remember. Well, well, it, it came out in August. And I think I uh, I don't remember if I, I don't remember if I was there, but I bought the DVD. And I saw it again, and I still can barely barely remember. Well, I think when when this film came out on DVD, I forget was it in was it was it November or October? Or, um, I can't remember. I don't think that wasn't that long ago. Was it like in late November? I saw I saw I saw it again. It was still a very boring. It was a very boring film. I don't think I never saw it in the theater. Yeah, I can't remember on that. But yeah, I'm very positive. I'm very positive. But I saw it when I got on the DVD though, and it was very boring. The the, the most of, most of these uh, some of these is uh, is uh, some of these uh, segments and the stories you know were prequels you know when the next one was like a, a sequel you know. Um. The, 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 the first, the first, like, the, the story with uh, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, you know, it was with it was the segment of him playing cards and gambling, you know, and him with a Powers Booth, you know. It was the bad because I like Power, I like I like Powers Booth as an actor, you know. I, I like him in when um like in, in Red Dawn and the, when we played a good bad guy in Sudden Death, and I like him in a Rapid Fire, you know. Power, I, I like Powers Booth as an actor, although I thought although I. I think I did not mind him in the film because because uh, I like Powers Booth, you know. But the story the story was boring. I think I also remember that uh, Joseph Gordon Levitt. I um, think he finds out that, that Powers Booth is his father. I think and then he dies. I can't remember. I can't remember. The film was that boring. I can't, I can't remember. And then the next time it was when um, the character in, in the fir for the first film because I I I still enjoy the first Sin City film. I I still do. And then the next segment it was um. The one that that act uh, Josh Brolin is he play plays um, it's a pre he starts the segment as a prequel to the segment in the first film that was played by Clive Owen so Josh Brolin he's playing um, Clive Owen's character you know and um, that was his, and it, and and um was it, I think I remember, was it was that in that segment that uh, Jessica Alba was in because Jessica Alba did not I do not I do not like you know he, she she I did not like her machete, you know. I didn't, did not, I did not like what was in the. She was appearing in the fourth Spike his film. Yeah, that that that's the thing that was, and she saw she sucked in that, and probably put her performance as Mrs. as a uh, Mrs. Uh, um, fantastic, you know, a slight bit better, but did not probably did, did not mind the the first Fantastic Four or the. The, the sequel, Rise of the Silver Surfer, but 
I'm just not a fan of Jessica Alba, personally, you know. But she, she she was not good in this. And Josh Brolin, um, I know he's I know he's still playing like, the Clive Owens character, you know, replacing him, you know. Um, it was it was a boring segment, you know. And um, they whether they said they uh, the character they wanted um, the character played by Ava Green was supposed to be originally by played by Angelina Jolie, you know, and. They said that after the first since they filmed, they wanted to make a sequel, you know, and they kept on delaying, delaying, you know, and eventually it was not Angelina Jolie, it was Evergreen. I said that there are some other actresses that were wanting to play the character before Evergreen. Did not care for the character, you know, and um, I think the, the other one, the, 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 the another character, um, Dennis Haysbert, um, was you know, the guy with the character with the red, uh, the yellow eye, you know. It was also supposed to be another. That's another character that he's replaced. It was in the first Sensei film that character that Dennis Hesper was playing. That was played by originally by the late Michael Clark Duncan, you know. And uh, and Michael Clark Duncan may rest in peace, you know. So Dennis Hesper took over the character that Michael Clark Duncan was playing, you know. Um, this is the story. The story elements, the story elements were very boring in the opening, you know, with a Mickey Rourke, you know, when. Yeah, and Amigo and Mickey Rourke does come back, and some other few um, actors, actors as well. And then the the bottom line, this is what the bottom line with this film was was a very boring film, you know. And uh, including in the the, the the last segment that the, there is the, a sequel, I believe, and that's the one with uh, Bruce Willis, you know. Um. Yeah, the thing is, he he's like he's like he plays like a ghost in this. He's a ghost of the character because he died in the in the first film, and he. I guess he plays as, as the ghost of his character that comes back, you know, and is in this se se sequel segment, you know. I was just, I was just never, I, was, I just never find that this, 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 um, most, most, like most of the film, most of the film is a prequel except for the last thing with Bruce, Bruce Willis is a sequel. This is his definition of boring. That's what, that's what it is. It's, it's a def definition of a boring film, you know. And the film, and the film bombs badly, you know. Harley, no people never even saw it, you know. It debuted a uh, number eight. I did. I did a. I did a vlog. You know how Sensei Two bombed. You know, and especially how about all these other cast members. You know, like uh, uh, Ray Liotta and uh, um, Chris, Christopher Lloyd. You know, although it's nice to see Christopher Lloyd in this film, but it's just still, it's, it's still, it still didn't matter. You know, and it's just this is a very boring film. You know, so yeah, since so since Sin City, a Dame to Kill for. Yeah, especially also this is the last thing a straw I have on, on Robert, Robert Rodriguez, you know, and Frank Miller, who I think was the 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 yeah the yeah was the creator of the Sin City graphic novels, you know. Boring film. Last, you know, I've been just I'm just tired of it. So, yeah, that film. This so that film that film did deserve did deserve to bomb the flop of the box office. Because they also the the criticize the between the the, the nine year gap between the first film because the first film came out in two thousand five and this film nine years later didn't do well you know because maybe that's why they, they some people quote on that because the nine year gap between that's why the film didn't do that well because people, people lost it probably probably people lost interest in the Sin City film you know but I always, I always uh, still like the first Sin City film but screw this screw this up. Uh, most most prequel little sequel film you know so that's that's number 11 and this is probably i don't can this one i don't care how long this video is going to take if it takes over an hour like it did in the first uh my first uh best film so so be it you know uh number 10 now this one i uh, now this one i definitely uh don't don't remember definitely definitely don't I definitely didn't see this in the theater, and if I if I if I, if I probably said in the vi in one of the videos if I mentioned this film, I don't think I did. I don't think I never saw this in the theater either because was this came out in February. This came out in Feb early February, and if I said this is see some theater, I'm like why? I'm thinking to myself right now. I was like, why did I see this film? It was a complete, it was a completely pointless film. And this is another film that did bomb at the box office, and it did deserve it. This because this film was this film sucked as well. Vampire Academy, you know, 
I, like I said, if I just this this is if I just is there, I'll think to myself, you know, why did I see it, you know? But I, got, I bought the DVD though, but then I said I, I saw it, and like this was a very pointless film, you know. Another the, this was based on a, it was based on a novel that um what was it? It was a it's a book series, I believe. Yeah. I'm trying to trying to find a. a yeah, based on the novel. No, I, I never read the novel. I never even heard the novel until the mentioning of they're making a film of this, the title, you know. And, and looking at the cast, I saw you know, for part of the reason why I probably wanted I did, I did see this one is because uh, Gabriel Gabriel Byrne was in because I like Gabriel because I like Gabriel I like Gabriel Byrne. I like this. I really like Jordan's performance in End of Days, you know, when the performance in the the Usual Suspects, you know. That's why that's why the only reason why I wanted to see because because he because he was in it you know. But the film was just, the film was just. And this was directed by Mark Waters who directed uh, Mean Girls and he directed uh, a film called um. He directed he directed uh, the Spiderwick Chronicles you know and the Spiderwick Chronicles like I said is definitely better than this you know. I haven't seen Mean Girls you know and. And I forgot, I forgot there, was, there was another film that he directed, but I forget. About, but I forget though. And this film bombed, you know. Like I said, I did my box office bomb list, you know. Um, it cost it cost thirty million, and it did had a very horrible opening. Um, debuted at number seven, made seven million in the U.S. and made fifty million overall. So barely made barely half of what this um uh, its budget, you know. And, they, and I read it like sometime later. You know, they try to raise money. You know, for trying to get get a budget to make a sequel. <laughs> and, and thankfully, it never did. You know, it, bar it barely made money for 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 trying trying to raise money for a sequel. It it didn't bar barely make any money. So thank that's what I'm saying. Thank God it didn't. You know, so this this is like this is like a film series that can stay. Probably just like probably just like Sin City, you know. This is a fran this is a franchise that can stay dead. They can stay dead now, you know. Because I don't think after the poor horrible performance that uh, Sin City, ma Sin City Two made, you know. I don't think they're gonna they don't want to make another uh, sequel prequel, you know. So yeah, this is like another another film that's based on a novel that didn't do well at the box office, you know. This is a, this is a um, film that could a franchise that can stay dead now. Well, because they're vampires, they're all dead now. So yeah, so rest in peace, Vampire Academy. You can stay dead now. Um, forgettable characters, unlikable characters, I should say. You know, I never cared about any other. I cared about no character because I, I said the film I saw because I wanted to because I didn't mind um, Gabriel Byrne because I like him as an actor, you know, but. Not even Disney even worth not even film. He's not even worth saving in the film, you know. So yeah, and I don't know. I don't know. What, I don't know what's what was worse, the first, the this film or the first Twilight film. I I don't like the Twilight franchise either. But I'm comparing by the first by the first film. You know that that film, the first that, that first film or this one. I don't know what's worse. Vampire films. So. It ain't nothing. It's an ain't nothing like what the classic. Uh, vampire films like The Lost Boys or Fright Night or uh, From Dust Till Dawn, you know. No way, anywhere, nowhere. So, Vampire Academy sucks. Bottom line. Now, the next one, um, now, now it's, it's a comedy. I don't have it because it's still playing in theaters, though, but, um, well, it's coming. Well, it's, uh, probably it's running. It's not going to be very long, you know. But I, but I saw I now this I now this I saw this with my brother though, and my brother thought it was it was really funny but I didn't, and the next the next one is um, Dumb and Dumber two, Dumb and Dumber two yeah, twenty years after the twenty years exactly twenty because nineteen ninety the first film nineteen ninety four and this year well not year two thousand fourteen twenty years, I I always enjoy the first I always enjoy the first um. Uh, Dumb and Dumber, you know. Always been a fan of the first one, you know. Jim Carrey, Jeff Daniels, yeah, and of course it was uh, twenty years, twenty, it's twenty years later, you know. And first, when I first, when I first, when I first heard about they were gonna make, finally gonna make a sequel to the first film, I was like, all right, cool, you know. 
seeing the trailer was the fir- the first trailer was all right, you know, and and then my brother then my brother wanted wanted to see it, so we went to see it in the theater. I did see this in the theater. Um, he my brother had a lot of laughs with it. He thought it was funny, you know. I didn't, because. I thought that the film with the film was unfunny, and I think it was one of the worst performances from Jim Carrey. You know, his student is just too bad because I really do enjoy Jim Carrey. You know, and I think this is like his worst, his worst, his worst perform, his worst performance. You know, and the, the Fairly Brothers, they haven't, they haven't made no good comedies the past few years. You know, not Hall Pass, no, and especially the Three Stooges, which the Three Stooges films they can kiss my ass. You know. I hate the hate that freaking film, you know. So the, the Fairly Brothers, they haven't made no good comedies for in a, in a few years, and this film, the, this film proves it even further, you know, that they still can direct a comedy film. They don't, they don't, they don't capture the same laughs and funnies like the the, the like they did for the first film, you know. This is this, this for the first film, you know. Well, well no, I'm sorry, but this this film here, um, the yeah, the whole the joke, you know, what. As in the trailer, you know, when Jim Carrey's been in that mental hospital like this, and he's been faking it for 20 years as all for a joke, you know. For me. Um, and of course, the, of course then the, 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 the Jim Carrey's character uh, as Lloyd Christmas, you know, he's being a complete douchebag, you know. Like how, like, you know, because, you know, they bring they bring back the, like, the, the character, you know, the blind kid in the wheelchair. He's now all grown up still in the wheelchair, you know. And Jim Carrey being a, just a complete douchebag to him, you know. Still, well, it was the joke. The jokes in the first one with the kid, you know, wasn't that um, wasn't that horrible though. But here they just take it, just take it even further. Like saying the jokes, like um, uh, what was the line? Um, uh, movies. Uh, say, have you seen? Any, oh yeah, have you seen any good movies? Because she, she's still blind, you know. Have you seen any good movies lately? And think that they're gone. They, they, because it cuts to like the the. Close up of the of, of the guy in the wheelchair, and you think they're gone, but they're not. They scream and yell in the kid's ear, you know. And he has all these exotic birds, and they left this cat that they have with him, you know, which thinking that wouldn't do any harm, you know, which of course it does. Cats eat all of, all the birds, and of course they have the cat that farts out feathers, you know. And you have a completely pointless uh, cameo appearance by Bill Murray, which is other than that, that's like a missed opportunity right there, you know. Bill Murray with Jim Carrey, you know, and I don't think they ever, they ever, never shared this, because I, I couldn't ever, I could, when I saw the, when I saw the film, you know, I was I'm watching with my brother, I, I would never have known that was Bill Murray, you know, I never knew that was Bill Murray, t- Bill Murray until I saw the credits when the film ended, you know, because he was wearing this hazmat suit, you know, he appears like on for thirty for 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 like thirty seconds, you know, and doesn't even get a share get a share of scene with Jim Carrey or Jeff Daniels, you know. You see him, he's just mixing the stuff, you know, and that was it, you know. That was like a missed opportunity. So great two great, or three great actors don't, doesn't get to share one scene together. Missed opportunity right there. And then the jokes, you know, later on, I think it's like, the, the, it basically takes like the same, the same plot of the first film, because, you know, the, like the first film, like they take the briefcase and truck all the way across, across country to get from one, from point A to point B, you know, basically, you know. And they do the same. Do, they basically, they basically take this, do the same thing right here. You know, they um, because they, they find out because you know, well, they said that the um, Jeff Daniels has a daughter. You know, so they go from a finder, but first um, the parents, well, you know, they want to take, want to get this package to her. So yeah, they want to take take this package to go all the way uh, across country for to deliver this package. So it's basically the same plot of the first one. You know, take the uh, take one. Pa- um, an object and take it across the country to get it delivered, you know, basically. That's to, to do the same plot, you know, with them um, as they did in the first film. Um, more unfunny jokes that were that were that they were not funny, you know. You know, with, with, with a scene where they take one of the, the, the one of the guys, you know, like um like in this one of the like the funeral home car, you know, and you know, of course they had a thing where they um fart, you know. Because I, I I hate fart jokes, you know. This is not it was that was never a funny thing for me, you know. I hate fart jokes, you know. Um, 
uh, did, did Jim Carrey, you know, was like being all oh, because. The other film is just like being, being like a complete douchebag. You know, I don't think they're not trying to be acting like dumb. They're just trying not to be more more douchebaggish, you know, and instead of being just playing dumb like they did or like they did in the first film, you know. Um Of course of course like in the plug in the like the theatrical release supposed to where they're driving their dog car, you know. But really enough, they they find they find their dog car, you know, and they just drive for like ten seconds and all all of a sudden, it just breaks to pieces, and that's it. So I was like, that poster is like false advertising, you know? They only drive for like 10 seconds, then just breaks apart, and that's in the ditch, it, you know? Of course, and then, um, I'm just, I'm just skipping ahead, because I don't, cause I don't care, because I forgot what was the rest of the film was about, you know? And, um, well, I do remember that, and when the film, when the film credits go, they have like this, you know, like tease like a, a fake poster for our next sequel, you know, like Dumb and Dumber or three or how it was, you know. Um, I'm, mean, I know when I still, I'm looking at the, I'm like, they did that better with twenty, with twenty two, twenty two Jump Street, how they're teasing so many of these fake sequels, you know, for to, to, to uh, twenty two Jump Street, you know, at the end of the film they're teasing like. They teasing for sequels, you know. They did that better than they do with with this, you know. It, with the with that end credit tease sequel poster, you know. I mean, so yeah. So Jimmy Jim Carrey, I think I gave him one of his worst his worst performances. Yeah, Jeff Daniels. I like Jeff Daniels, you know, and maybe he wasn't he wasn't that much of a that much a douche than um, than Jim Carrey was, you know, but. This is the film. The film sucked. You know, it was just very, very. Of course, you know, it, it's, it's twenty years. Twenty years. You know, I think I'm thinking of myself. You know, because um, I think that's the thing. that's just a little, bit, a little bit uh, too late. You know, because I'm saying about talking about the they're doing a sequel to uh, doing a sequel to Independence Day, and that's just, I was saying that's just way too late. You know, this is way too long. Too many years have gone by. You know, and it's, it's the same thing with this with Dumb and Dumber Two. So Dumb and Dumber Two. Sucks. So the next, and um, um, which course, uh, which course isn't it's like there's two comedies that I that I do that I do like you know, I do like Twenty Two Jump Street. I do like Neighbors you know and, but the, the, the Dumb and Dumber Two, just sucks. It's 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 it sucks. So yeah. So that's 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 uh, so that's number ten. Now number number nine is um. Now horror films, uh, I I I'd honestly say I had I had a good I had a good year with horror films, you know that surprisingly I enjoyed that I, that I thought would suck, you know, because horror films, like I said, horror films are not trying to be scary nowadays, you know, and and I and I I had a good year surprisingly with horror films, you know, my the, the three three of the uh, one horror film is an honorable mention that's on, I went in my video and two of the horror films are on my top list, you know, I enjoy The Purge, Anarchy, I enjoyed. Um, uh, as above, so below, and the uh, best horror film I thought was uh, I, I don't enjoy was Deliver Us from Evil. But of course, there's other horror films. There's some other horror films that I did, uh, that I did not see. Or this I did not I did not see Oculus. I did not see the Quiet Ones. Um, this um the Pyramid, you know, which is produced by Alexander Hyde, as you know. Um. I still haven't yet. Um, well, actually, honestly, I wouldn't lie. I did. I did see. I, I don't say. I did. I did see. I did see the pyramid, and which is supposed to be taken like a found. I, I'm not. Well, I can't. I can't say for sure because this, this is not. This is not even on my list or anywhere. So I can't. I can't say it that way. So, but when I when I do do a video of it, I'll just give my thoughts on it. But for now. Uh, I'm not talking about the pyramid. This next, this, this that's the film. That's not the film I'm talking about. This film, uh, this film, um, this horror film I did not like was. Well, I thought the other three horror films I like is better than this. And that's Ouija. Ouija, which is produced by Michael Bay, like he's been do producing all on, on the remakes and other uh, produced on other horror films, you know. Produced by Michael Bay, and Ouija. Now this, now this is the film that pissed me. This is another film. How this film, uh, this film was really a uh, this is a generic film with no scares, cheap cheap scares, unlikable characters that were the neck that I give a rat's ass about, not once. 
you know, cheap, like I said, cheap thrills, cheap scares, you know, uh, ending that, that, that I, a, pre a predictable ending, I would say, you know. That I that I that that I did see coming a mile away, you know. And this is the and the one that pissed me off the most. This film, on the on the weekend of October twenty, uh, was the twenty. Yeah, October twenty fourth. Yeah, October twenty on October was it? Yeah, it was October twenty fourth to the, the weekend of to, to October twenty fourth. Yeah, that's the film that that that's the film that beat out John Wick on the opening on opening weekend. How, how much the film? How much the film did make? Was it a uh, thirty something? Did it make like thirty or twenty something open, on opening weekend? I forget. That was a film that beat out John Wick. I, I have nothing to say. A, 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 a badass character played by Keanu Reeves in a kick-ass action film that is my second favorite film, best uh, live-action film, and best action film. Of this year, got beat up by a shitty horror film called Ouija. Um, an ex-hitman got technically an ex-hitman got beat out by a freaking board game, which the film doesn't even focus mainly on the board game, you know, because they only use the board game a couple times and that's it, you know. But it's 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 it's, it's like it's like Dread all over again, you know, because I love Dread. The posters right there and. That film got beat up by also by a shitty horror film that called House of the End of Streak with Jennifer Lawrence, you know, which I do not like Jennifer Lawrence. I did not like her in as Mystique, and I did not I do not care for her in the Hunger Games films. I'm not a fan of the Hunger Games films. She she starred in that film. That was a especially the title alone was was it was a shitty title as well. House of the End of the Street, you know, that film. Um, it, 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 that film opened up at number two, though. It didn't get number one. That, but that film beat out... That film still made more money opening weekend than Dread did, you know? That And that Dread debuted at number six, you know? I'm pissed about that still. I'll always be, I will always be pissed, pissed about how much Dread made on opening weekend, you know? And that film bombed, and I'm still pissed, and I want it because I want to see a sequel to Dread. And here, it's the same thing. A, a, a badass action film, just like Dread, John Wick, got beat out by a shitty horror film... I just, I just, I just, I just, I just, I just, I'm staying perfectly calm because I don't want to lose it, you know. I don't want to go all, all berserk around my room. No, I know it's just, I know it's just a movie. I, I know it's just a movie, and I'm staying calm, you know. But still, this is the thing. Well, how, how much, how a film? As a, as a generic film, you know. Yeah, I had like three, four films this year, and that had good horror, a good year with horror films. But there's always gonna be one or two horror films that you're not gonna like, you know. But. Ouija is the worst horror film I've seen this year. I haven't seen Oculus or The Quiet Ones, and I'm still not entirely sure on the pyramid, you know. But I don't know if I like the film or I'm not. I'm, I'm mixed about the pyramid. So, but I haven't, I haven't, I haven't get too much. I haven't, I haven't, I haven't given that much thought about it yet. Still, but 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 Ouija is by far. I would still say the pyramid is is better than um, Ouija. You know, I would still say that because Ouija is the worst horror film I've seen this year. And I still can't believe I still can't believe that it beat out John Wick. And even even it was number one for two weeks. On the, on the next weekend, it beat out a film that that a lot of people like this year, the critically acclaimed film called uh, Nightcrawler, with Jake Gyllenhaal. That Ouija even beat out that film, you know, for the on the next weekend, for the on on the Halloween weekend, you know. But the, the Ouija, yeah. But, but yeah, the the characters were I, didn't, I never, never gave rats ass about the characters. The, the, the generic generic cheap boo scares, you know, that were never scary. Oh, look, like a, like a stupid thing. Oh, look, uh, uh, one of the characters like the, the thing with the guys, uh, the guy, uh, the girl's boyfriend is ru is like running, you know, and um, and the, the they're like this um. I uh, forget, like, this thing, um, what it was called, um, and she sees, like, a roll of chalk comes rolling down the, on the road, where or sidewalk, and then it says, hi, friend, you know, because that's what the Ouija board spelled out for, hi, friend, you know, you see it, like, a couple times on the walls, you know, and, ooh, was, uh, I'm supposed to be scared by that, you know, I'm supposed to be scared by a chalk that rolls up to my feet, you know. And of course, I of course uh, on the sc jump scares that I knew that was coming, like when the guy was thought, thought I saw his um, 
one of the girls and goes out to the pool, you know, and of course I'm like, oh, okay, that, I, know, I know what's going to happen, you know. And the, the ending was predictable. I knew it was something like that, when, that it was, it was not the end of the horror, you know, because like, that, that eyeglass thing appeared there again. And, man, she looked into that, you know, and I knew it was something that was going to happen. Predictable ending. That I saw coming. So yeah, Ouija, worst horror film of this year. The three horror films, Purge and Anarchy, still better than this. As Above, So Below was miles better than it. And Deliver Us From Evil is miles better. And that film, overall, I believe, made like... Um, seven, yeah, the film made $75 million on a budget of $5 million. And yeah, that, and and as well, the film made the, the film made more than um, as above so so below, you know, which made thirty eight million though. Well, the Deliver delivers from evil and um, the Purge Anarchy made more money than Ouija, so at least at least those films deserve to make those monies more than Ouija. Did, Ouija didn't deserve to to make a uh, seventy five million dollars. Even made fifty million in, in the U S. You know. So it's, a, so it's a big hit no matter how it's been put, you know, on a budget of $5 million. Of course, well, the world critics didn't like it as well, so... At least I agree with the critics, you know, it's... It deserves to be to have, like, a... Well, it had, like, a, what, 11% 11, 11 on Rotten Tomatoes? I can't remember. But... Film... A film... Uh, uh, the worst horror film of this year is, is Ouija. Um... Beat, beat out John Wick... That still that still pisses me off, you know. Moving on, so yeah, that's my number. Nine. That's the, yeah, that's that is that's the. Uh, no, that's that's number eight. That's number eight. So number eight, Ouija. Next one at number seven is uh, one of Arnold Schwarzenegger's newest films, Sabotage. I have nothing to I have nothing to say about sabotage. Arnold Arnold Schwarzenegger, you know, the week comes back comes back to the acting business, which the only good film that he's done as a recent um was in 2013. That was The Last Stand. I enjoy The Last Stand. That was like the only really good film that he's done as a recently. I did not like Escape Plan, and I did not like this film. This film I I mentioned this was a film that was also a box office flop. It made a budget of thirty-five million, made fourteen million overall, made ten million in the U.S. Had a horrible opening on opening weekend, you know. And I, which I, I which it does, it does deserve to flop. Sabotage. Um, I never get, never gave, I never gave crap about the characters, especially I did not, did not like, I did not care for the characters. Um, did not care for Terrence Howard's character. Did not, did not like, did not care for Sam Worthington's character. Other other cast members that's the, the the team of the the DEA team did not care for whatsoever. Arnold Schwarzenegger, you know, or, or, or especially what was what, what was um looking forward to was in the trailer and which that what that was the whole trailer that was a complete lie, you know. Like how in the trailer was um it showed that um his um his wife and daughter was his wife yeah his wife and kid or daughter you know. That um, they were kidnapped, they were taken, you know. When from look like the trailer, like it looked like he was um, Arnold Schwarzenegger was gonna hunt down the people who um, kidnapped his family, and he said, you know, I will, I will destroy them all, you know. And he's gonna go and kick some ass, you know. But no, that trailer well, obviously was like, because in the opening of the film, they show the footage, they show, they show the footage, and his wife and kid are dead already. So that was, so that was, so that opportunity was was thrown right out the window, and. Well, Wems and um, of course they're about the about the money, you know, who took the money, you know, and who's killing their team one by one. It's a mystery. Is it? Well, it is a mystery until you find out. Like I said, about to, it's a mystery until you find out at the end, you know. Well, what was it? nonstop? That was the nonstop. That was um, that was a better mis That was a better mystery film. I like nonstop a lot. That was a better. That was a better mystery film with better likable characters, you know. Lee, I, 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 Liam Neeson was a much more likable character than anybody in the, a, a, anybody in this film, you know. Was he was a much more, much more likable character nonstop than 
than a, than any of these likable characters in Sabotage. But um, who's killing who's killing people? You know, killing the thirteen one one. And now, okay, all right. It, the film is yeah. The film is R rated and it's bloody. You know, I I do I do, I will do give credit. They do show some practical blood, like like one of the team members. I think I believe one is like hung up on the ceiling. You see like he's like opened up and like guts is everywhere. You know, or um, when a member gets hit by a train, you see some. Um, some splattered body parts and some parts went after after that after the aftermath of that you know, and there was a, there was a lot of some good uh, practical blood squibs and you know like um, when Sam Worthington's body is in the fridge and all this blood comes spewing out you know, yeah the, the film is bloody they get some good well of course there's some certain CGI blood though but so most of the part is some good practical uh, uh blood you know and some guts as well you know. I do get credit for that. I do at least at least <laughs> the figure is that um uh well there is a good there is a good film that should they usually put usually see CGI blood though but <laughs> in a, a poorly made film you know of course they would use good uh real some some real blood you know go figure on that you know but yeah I do that's that's, that's the only thing I would give I would give the pass you know because it has a has a lot of blood in it though but I do not like do not care for the characters and do not care for um, Arnold's character. Not care about um, the woman who was the FBI agent, you know. <clears throat> um. What is the, oh yeah, oh yeah, something. I this was one thing they kept like, getting on murders. Everybody's everybody's cussing and cussing and cussing every and ever since in every sentence they say, you know, now uh, fuck this, fuck that, fuck this, and fuck that, you know. And I'm sitting, I'm sitting through this like okay, is this, this a now, I don't know, I don't know how to say this though, but um, it just reminded me. Well, actually, no, actually it does. because I'm, I'm looking over, here, I'm looking over there, I'm looking in the DVD, my DVDs, and what, what, what character, what, what, what film I kept that that I remember that had a lot of swearing like that so much. And now I'm thinking to myself like, um, oh yeah, I remember. It's it's like Rob Zombie's Halloween. I do one of the worst remakes ever, and. He, Rob Zombie, he puts like all, all. It's like his script is putting everybody cussing so much in the film, you know. Like you just kept thinking, is it? Kept thinking, everybody is like literally in this film sabotage. It, like every single sentence they say is either have the f word or the s word, you know, fuck shit, you know, whatever, you know. Every every much every bad word in the book, you know. And of course, they probably found that they for of course the. They find out that they'd say who took the money. Of course, it was Arnold, so he could pay off the the corrupt cops in Mexico to kill the guy who killed his family. Unlikable, like I said, unlikable characters. Um, never gave, never gave a crap about any one of them. Um, everybody, everybody swearing, and every single, every single sentence they say. You know, completely, completely over the, swore, swore, especially over the top as well, you know. Everyone was being over the top swearing in the film, you know. Oh, F you, and F you, this and that, you know. The film, the, the film deserved, the, the film did deserve to, to bomb badly, you know. It did, it did. I just, I just, I don't want to see any more of these, uh, any more... Arnold's films. Well, maybe there's only one film though. That's when he's appearing. That he's appearing in this uh, zombie film called Maggie. That, that's the only thing I probably. You know, listen, I'm not looking forward to seeing him in Terminator Genesis. You know, screw, screw Term Terminator Genesis. But Maggie's the only thing I have left. And if they don't like that film, I don't want to see. Look forward to seeing any more Arnold Schwarzenegger films. You know, I don't. I don't. So yeah, move it. So yeah, moving on. So 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 so, screw sabotage, and so what was that was number. Yeah, number number eight. That was that was uh, number eight. No, seven. God. This is these bad. All these all these bad films is making me is making me lose count of what I'm at. You know, no sabotage. That was number seven. Now I know I don't have that on DVD. I don't have I don't have that DVD, and I don't want to I don't want to own it. 
you know, um, I, I saw because, I saw like like more towards the end because um my brother was watching it on his computer and you know I was sitting there watching and like I was like sitting there like why you know but even he likes the film you know my brother he'll like my brother he'll like anything you know whether it's good or bad you know I'm just why I, I saw it briefly at the end and I was like no I don't know this film sucks. So that that was number seven. Number six. Game now. Game number six. Now now it's a it's a remake and that was not wanted, not needed. It'll it'll, 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 it'll a typical generic film as well, you know, and that is RoboCop. Now of course I've heard all this all this talks about it all the way back in what 2011 when I first heard about it. 2011, late 2011, 2012, I forget. I remember all. I remember there was all the talks they were trying to how they're trying to make it. You know the casting. You know, especially from the guy who was this uh, nobody I haven't heard of who was supposed to cast as the lead as playing Alex Murphy as RoboCop and him telling him dissing Peter Weller. You know, playing oh this could be more than just chin action. You know, my performance is gonna be much more than just chin action. You know, I'm a big fan of the RoboCop film, so but I'm gonna. Do more than just action. Basically saying I'm gonna do be I'm gonna do better than you, Peter Weller. Basically, that's that's basically what he was saying, you know. And all the things with the the um with the suit and everything, you know, and and uh, uh oh, oh, this is a <laughs> the minute I knew it was the film was gonna be bad as soon as the opening of the MGM line because you hear Samuel Jackson doing. <laughs> You know, on this TV show that he does, you know, like why is ever why is America so robophobic? You know, <laughs> I just got, just got me laughing. This is like the opening of the the, the start of a RoboCop remake. It's going Samuel Jackson going you know, you know. Oh my God! And of course, also the film was PG-13. You know. Which the which the film which Robocop is I I love Robocop you know I've always been a big fan of Robocop you know Peter Weller this guy has nothing on what Peter Weller did in Robocop especially in this film as Peter since the film's Peter thirteen the lacks of blood you know nothing compares what the the the, the R rated did in the in the original Robocop but the Ed two oh nines you know which of course they call it the call these um the film call it E D S you know. It like in the re it doesn't it doesn't capture what holds the hold doesn't hold a candle basically to the what the original had like the Ed two hundred nine shooting at one of the coworkers bang 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 shooting him all bloody bits and still keep on going bang 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 you know more shooting at hit the dead body you know or Peter Weller's um well his uh basically almost his death you know how to shoot his hand off you know and shoot him in the head you know shooting him boom 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 here you know here it's just like the the guy Alex Murphy a car bomb a very poorly uh, explosive car bomb explosion, you know. He opens the door and he just flies back horribly, you know. Um, to be all of one of the meaning purposes in the in in the original, and how when uh, of course they, they still know his, his family knows who where, who he is still, you know. They they still um, trying to talk to him, you know. But the the purpose what the original was, you know how. Um, they they know that he's been dead. The, the family has been dead, and they moved on without him. You know, and he gets hurt by that. You know, we're trying to regain his memories and all that. You know, here they still retain it. They still retain his memories. Still remote knows who his wife and daughter is. You know, oh no, wife and daughter, wife is wife and son. You know, and uh, Gary Oldman is there. You know, just just basically talk about all the things about RoboCop. You know, and all the. the Another ridiculous, another ridiculous thing is the song choices. When they're training, when they're doing trainings, you know, RoboCop doing training scenes. You hear this, um, uh, they put on this uh, Wizard of Oz song about, you know, I think about the, I think it was about the Tin Man, you know, I think I wish I had a heart or something like that. And the next song choice, you hear this yodeling, annoying. Um, Michael Keaton, you know, who was the bad, who was the villain in this, basically, you know, you know, whether oh, what is this, well, how he wants to change, how he wants to change the series, like, oh, let's, well, look, we want more tactical. Let's go with black, you know. It's like how is making the suit black makes it tactical. It's just basically changing the color of the suit. Basically, I don't know how that is gonna make a difference, you know. Jay 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 Burchell, who voiced Hiccup in How to Train Your Dragons, you know, he's just there 
in a in a nothing in a no, in a nothing role basically. And he's just there just to I think he was about, about marketing the Robocop, you know, wearing this suit, you know, wearing this old as like his like his rich guys wearing these fine suits, you know. He's Jay Bird, he's there and he's there he's there in a nothing role. Gary Oldman is there just to explain about the the effects of what Robocop can do, what what it does, you know. Uh, I don't know what to say. Of course, um, um, where where is I want to say? Like I said, I mentioned before, I put I put the, the film had with a big on a big big budget. And it didn't do well in the U.S. It made fifty eight million, you know, which it does deserve, deserve the bomb in the U.S. So it didn't do well, but it did well overseas and made it just now worldwide two hundred forty two million. Doesn't deserve to, in my opinion, in my opinion, doesn't deserve to make a dime. So, RoboCop, 2014, unwanted, unneeded. Never, I never wanted to hear. Never want, I never wanted to remake of it. Cause especially all learning after all the stuff, you know how the, all the um, earlier on the stuff they make uh, fun of the, how they mention the original suit, and they make fun of it, you know. And using the, they steal the quotes from the original film, like I'll buy that for a dollar, you know, and um. Oh, there was another one that was on that line, I forget. Yeah. Well, at least at least the film, the original film, still has more higher ratings than this remake, which it, this film deserves more, more higher ratings. Deserve, the, the original has more higher ratings than this film, which I'm glad about, because the, I, I'll always love the original Robocop film. One of the, one of the best... I would say the action slash sci-fi science fiction films of the '80s and probably one probably most of all time in my book, you know. That's Robocop 2014. I, I I knew it going into it, and I was right. Sucks big time. On unwanted remake of a oh, especially also I think about it's also the second uh, Paul Verhoeven Hoven um. Uh, film to be remade. They did with, with a total recall, you know. And that film sucked as well, you know. Stop trying to remake Paul Ver Verhoeven's um movies. I and mean, they're trying. I heard they're trying to remake Starship Troopers, you know. I'm like, really? That film doesn't does does it look like it needs to be remade, you know? Stop trying to remake. Stop trying to re remake his films, you know. Leave it alone, you know. Yeah. So that's number. That's number six. Um, number five, well, my guess is that Ouija is, well, it's all, it's an all horror film, that's still the worst film of this year, but this next film is a horror comedy, you know, comedy horror, which, well, there's less of horror, less thing, less, less horror stuff, you know, in this film, and the comedy was not funny at all, and that's, um, number five is, I'll put this, is Tusk. Tusk, directed by Kevin Smith. Uh, so I'm thinking. I watched the film. I was like, what happened? To, what happened to Kevin Smith? You know, he he directed great comedy films like Clerks, Clerks Two, um, Ch uh, Chasing Amy, um, Dogma, Mall Rats, um, Jay and Silent Bob, Straight Back. Great log he directed wrote wrote and directed good comic great comedy films. I enjoy Clerks and Clerks too, you know. But then he direct then he goes on to direct the Seth Rogen Elizabeth Banks film called Zachary Zach and Mary make a porno, you know, and never saw it and uh, look I saw the trailer look completely stupid, you know. Um I saw I saw Red State and that film was completely boring a boring boring what they said the was a horror film. Action horror. I saw no, I saw nothing horror about it whatsoever. That film sucked as well. And then he goes and directs this film. A low, well, low budget. Um, it was it was a low budget with a budget of three million and made like one million. This film got a theoretical release and made one million. I don't know why. And and it's just 
the comedy is because it stars, it stars Justin Long, who I liked him in Live Fear, Die Hard, you know, and thought I thought he was didn't mind him in Dodgeball, you know, and he was just, he was he was this unlikable douchebag, you know, who was him and his because he he did this podcast, you know, with like Kevin Smith, he did podcasts, you know, they're doing this they're doing they did this pod, podcast with Haley Joe Osmond, you know. Um, they're they they laugh they they they're, they're, just, they're just jerks who laugh at people, especially they laugh at this guy who um, got, actually got his leg cut off and they laugh about it. And then Justin Long goes Justin Long goes to Canada to get the unfunny ca Canadian jokes, you know, um, like the like the guy with the with the with the flag, you know, I think Mason also, you know, put the you know the Canadian flag, you know, and he goes to the convenience store with the. Two clerk, the uh, two um, store clerks. One was played by Kevin Smith's daughter. One of them played by Johnny Depp's daughter. And they're like, how you know, like, like you know, say, how long to get to the road? About a boot two hours. And that's why he's copying exactly what they say. About a boot two hours. And you know, like, oh, hey, Americans, you know, obvious, no, obvious Canadian jokes that that were not funny, you know. And of course, when they get to get to the guy, this guy's house played by Michael Parks, you know, basically, you know, the guy, you know, wants to is 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 a, is a Partly the the horror comedy the the horror part was that the guy wants to turn Justin along into a walrus because the guy he was safe he was, when he was when he was younger like a teenager he was safe he was shipwrecked and he got saved by a walrus and he called him Mr. Tusk you know because he you know he drugged he drugged him with a T you know and that's why he called there there they'll be all right Mr. Tusk it's it's basically it's basically well I I. I my brother, he also said that it was, it was like in the element of the human centipede, you know. It's just this, uh, uh, human centipede. Don't get me started on that. Just it was just rough. But Tusk, you know, there's a, there's a, the, 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 you're not doing better than Tusk though. Tusk is. I don't know. I don't know what's. Uh, well, human centipede. I don't think is a lot worse than that, though. But Tusk still sucks, you know. Although I do give one. I do give. I do as another give. I do one. Um, a positive. I do give one positive about the film, is when um you know when Justin Long is in the is in the walrus suit, you know. I mean, the, the effects are ba the effects are made by um what was the guy's name um Robert the special makeup effect the special the special effects by uh Robert uh Kurtzman. That was the guy's name. I just wanted to sort of point it out because the guy did a lot, a lot of um, special effects for a lot of good films like Night, like Night of the Creeps and Predator and um, Deep Star Six, you know. Um, what other, what other films he did special effects and from just from uh, from Dusk Till Dawn, um, The Faculty, The House on Haunted Hill remake. You know, it was as that that, that, was, that was, it's it's a good it's a good practical looking a uh, walrus suit. I do give it that, you know, because you know, Robert Christman did a lot of, did the effects of a lot of good films like what the films like I said like Night of the Creeps and uh, Deep Star Six and um, Predator. You know, that's uh, that's the only that's the only thing I would give about this film is that the the practical walrus suit. I do give credit to that. It looked. Uh, for for a low budget film like three million dollars and the walrus suit, I think it looked it looked nice. I do I do give it I do credit give credit to that though, and that's and that's it you know, because you know he wants to um also um well oh yeah another the the warning where the where Justin Long is at you know when his girlfriend and Haley Joel Osment they get help from a detective play by Johnny Depp you know. Johnny Depp playing another wacky character with this over the top French accent like oh um I'm this uh Guy Le Pout. How 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 was the guy what was this character's name? Guy Le Pout or Point Which of course is funny in the credits, you know, they'd say they'd say and Johnny Depp, you know, it says and Guy Le Pout that plays as the character, as if the character was playing himself, you know. You know, I I he said he talks how how he talks like this, you know. This French accent is like um, what was like, um, what is this guy, he, 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 he kind of talks in like this, over the, t like, like in this, you know, I am guy, you poo, you know,
of the T Tibet Police Department, you know. That's, it's just, I, I, I can't do how it acts, but it's, it sounds like that, you know. Then I doubt it's just like, Johnny Depp, please stop with these wacky characters, you know. Well, like I said, in Transcendence, you, Transcendence, Johnny Depp plays a normal guy, but that film uh, did, did poorly, you know. So even when he does play a normal person, you know, still doesn't do well, you know. So Johnny, basically, Johnny Depp can't win either way, you know. Either play and can't play in a... Uh, Ken doesn't do well as playing as a normal guy and still continue playing wacky characters. That's, that's, that's why I had enough, I had enough with Johnny Depp, you know. This is too bad. I like Johnny, I like Johnny Depp, though, but he starts playing all these wacky characters like the Lone Ranger and then Alice in Wonderland and now this character. The joke, the the jokes were not funny, and like oh, like another thing, like uh, like when the um, back with this girl, with the Justin Long's girlfriend, they try to like, she's like talking to somebody, you know, they try to find out who this who this who this guy is, and she's talking to him, like it's obviously they obviously she's talking to Haley Joel Osment, you know, of course they try to hide him, try to surprise, uh, so who she's who she's talking to, who she's sleeping with, you know. I mean, to me, it's like the answer was the answer was pretty well obvious, you know. It was obviously, it was Haley draws me, you know. The film and the film the, the film ends, you know, because with him starting with him getting in the him still stuck in the tough suit, basically he is a walrus because uh, basically what Michael Parts did, you know, how he he basically turned him into a full fledged walrus. Now he's grunting and everything. I guess he I guess he lost his ability to speak. Was well, it said his tongue was cut up, but that's all he does is like ah. Now he's thinking he is a walrus, you know. And of course, Kevin Smith. You know, Kevin Smith. You know, he you now he's basically he's doing like this uh, this new trilogy he's doing. Tusk was the first film. He's doing another film called Yoga Hosers, little ways, and he's doing a film called w with a moose called It's Jaws with a Moose. So it's basically doing a dumb film with a, about I guess like about a, a killer moose maybe. You know, that's because basically it says saying Jaws with a moose. So. Kevin Smith, I just think he just retired from acting, you know. Although my brother, he likes, he likes, he likes to show Comic Book Men. I haven't watched Comic Book Men, but my brother, he likes to show Comic Book Men. This is Kevin Smith. I wish, you know, and of course, this is maybe this he's talking about doing a Clerks Three. I don't want him to do it though, because he's gonna mess that up, you know. He just stop, just stop directing, you know. This is a, he, he, he wrote great, he wrote. And directed great comedy films like Clerks, Clerks 2, Dogma, Mall Rats, you know, and such, you know. This is Tusk. This is this just sucks. It sucks. Bottom line. So that's that's number five. Now number four. Now this was a film that I thought was going to be the worst film of this year, but it wasn't. The film still sucks, but this is what. Early, early in the year, this is why I thought this was, this was going to be the worst film of the year, though. But it wasn't. And that's what I do have. And I knew I had my I had my doubts on it, you know, but... Transformers Age of Extinction. I just... I, I just have no words to say about it, you know. I, I knew... as F at the time, I was I had about I had I had it up to here with the Transformer films because all the all the dumb stuff they did with it, you know. And, and Age of Extinction. Now I did like a trailer reaction rant to it, you know. Um. And I and I said before I I I, I predicted this film. I did predict the film was gonna make over a billion dollars, and I was correct. The film made over a billion dollars. Made a billion eighty-seven million. It's still the highest. Is I believe it's gonna. I, I believe it will stay the highest grossing film of the year because you know the Hobbit, the last Hobbit film, and the Hunger Games films. You know, Mocking J Part One. The way how well, how Mocking J Part One is making right now, I don't think it's not gonna make a billion dollars. And the uh, and uh, the last Hobbit film, you know, it's it's still making a lot of money. Um, I think it's gonna be close though, but I think that Transformers is still gonna be the highest grossing film of 2014. You know. And it made over, it made a hundred million exactly, you know, on the opening weekend. I heard read on the, the controversy that people were talking about how um, it did, did it make like ninety million. No, it made it made a hundred million, or did it make ninety million? No, it should have made like hundred ninety million. I'm like, 
if there was so much, why are you talking about controversy and what's it hot? Um, what differences? Um, what differences it make? This doesn't make on the opening weekend. The film made a hundred million over the weekend, and the film made a hundred million over the opening weekend. I don't know what was so, so um, goddamn the big deal was about how much it made over the weekend. You know, if it made a hundred million dollars, it made a hundred million dollars on the opening weekend. Who gives? Who gives a crap? Um, uh, once again, we we'll, 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 once again, I had well, how did I had up to here with Michael Bay? You know. Especially he like, like I said, he, he produced uh, the the shitty horror film Ouija, you know, and another thing which I'll get to, you know. Uh, I was never I was never a big fan of Mark Wahlberg, you know. Although it did, although it didn't uh, kind of kind of liked him in Pain and Gain, which I do like Pain and Gain. That was the, the only new Michael uh, Bay film that I like as of now, you know. But I was not, I was not a big fan of Mark Wahlberg, and of course the the, the character is playing. Like his daughter, her boyfriend, right there, you know, never gave a crap about them, you know, never, you know, typical, you know, generic, generic characters, never gave a crap about it, you know, um, and the, 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 the um, what was the, the, what was the, I did not mind the music because I was, I, I honestly, because you know, the, the whole, the whole franchise, I did not mind the scores to the music to the whole. Fr- to the whole franchise, not mind the scores to the music by Steve Jablonski, you know. But I'm just gonna say, why does why does Michael Bay, you know, do this? No, why can't why can't he just direct good movies like he did, like in Bad Boys One and Two, and The Rock, and The Island, and um, what other films they done? What other films he did? Well, I think those those are like the only good films that he directed to me, and in my opinion, you know, I'm not a big fan of Armageddon, I'm not a big fan of Pearl Harbor, you know. Uh, I was just ne- I was just never. Those are the only, the only the the four good uh, Michael Bay films that I do enjoy. Yeah, the Island, The Rock, Bad Boys One and Two. Well, maybe I'll put Pain and Gain as well because I I, su- I surprisingly I liked Pain and Gain. Um, but tra- like I said, so this is what this is why I've had up to here with the trans with tr- the Transformer films, you know. And it's good that now, now after this, you know, Michael Bay, he's not going to direct any more of these. Thank, thank God, you know. But but even if someone else uh, does, a, a different director is going to direct the the, the the fifth film. So sure, they're still used with Michael Bay's, you know, the the, the humor and everything is still going to be in there. I bet you know. And all with with Mark with Mark Wahlberg, he said that he wasn't going to come back for a fifth film, but it turns out recently, you know, a recent like interview or something like that, um. He's he's going he's still gonna return you know so we'll get more of the character of Kay Gager you know uh, the story the story looks completely stupid and of course the opening of course they they don't mention any any of the any of the human characters in the pre in, in number three they don't mention Shia LaBeouf's character they don't mention Josh DeMille or Tyrese Gibson they don't mention um what was the his girlfriend's name I forget they don't mention any, they don't mention any of the, any of the human characters in number three well the only thing they mentioned that was from number three was uh, the 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 incident the incident in Chicago because because of the billboard that Mark Ball was driving by said remember Chicago um the story goes and the story goes that there is this there is this um mi- secret military team called uh, was it the the uh, c- cemetery wind you know they want to destroy all Autobots and Decepticons. They want to. They want to destroy him so they can, you know, because because it's in his lead, and so it's led by Kelsey Grammer. And and he was, you know, like I, you know, what was it? Um, the the age of the Transformers is over. You know, it's this is this is this is our planet. It's not their planet. And so the thing is, like, I, I'm thinking to myself, you know, about this character, like, like, dude, you know, these Autobots, they saved, they saved, help, they help, they help save the planet three times. In the f- past three movies, and saving the planet from total human extinction, and now you just want to, you know, you want to kill up these Autobots to help save your ass, you know, three times, you know, and it, and because they they this bounty robotic bounty hunter that's I don't think it's not a Decepticon, but it's like a cr- from the creators, you know, called Lockdown. They help they they help Kelsey Grammer's team out help kill because the opening because. Like I knew from the trailer, they showed Ratchet, you know, and I and I was right. He he does die, you know. They they kill they kill off they kill off Ratchet, you know, and they kill off a, one of the other Autobots, you know. What was it called? Leadfoot, you know, because I showed like in a 
a video footage, you know. Um. But, 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 of course, uh, the multi, they, but they take all the dead bodies, you know, and because they led to this a big multi-millionaire corporation called, um, uh, what was it, what was it, what was the corporation called? Da, 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 I, forget, I forget what the thing was called, um, but, but it was led, it's led by Stanley Tucci, and Stanley Tucci, I like Stan, I like Stanley Tucci as an actor, but as I predicted, he was, I knew he was gonna be like a goofy character, you know, because he's a guy because he wants to build his own transformer. He wants to build. He wants to make his own transformers by killing off all these other all the other robots and melting them together. You know to make their own transformers. Um, of course, they they they, they also take Mega what is left of Megatron's body. You know, and they may they create the character Galvatron. But um, you know they they take his mind and they put it in. It, it, well, his mind leaked into Galvatron's body because you know his it said that. Um, the surviving character Brains, who thought died when in number three, you know, but they captured him as well. His they said his that 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 um head was not as dead as they thought, you know, so the mind lingered into Galvatron, so Gal with Megatron it has a new body, you know, and he doesn't die he doesn't die, he never gets he never gets to a well he does get to fight during the highway chasing, but in the big finale he doesn't and he gets away, you know, so eventually you can see him see more of him in the fifth in the fifth film, you know. You know, he says, "We'll meet again, Prime, for I am reborn." And it's not, it is not, and it's not voiced by Hugo Weaving, by the way. So Hugo, we Hugo Weaving is not the voice. Um. Yeah, but the, the story was the story was with the how they wanted to do get rid of all the Autobots, you know, to build drink transformers, you know. Why would so why would you kill the kill the heroes that saved your plant saved the human race three times and you want to get rid of them? And of course, in the with the you know with Mark Wahlberg as this inventor, you know, um, they they get the car chase, you know. Oh, like I, like I said, like I said during the trailer rant, you know, how they mentioned all the the merit the American flags all throughout the film. You, well, once well, not all throughout the film, but they do you do see it towards more of the end of the film. You see more American the, with the all the whole thing with American flags, like one you see on um his house on the front porch and one in his barn. He has like a a welding helmet with an American flag on it. In a more, in more towards like in one scene in Chicago, there's an American flag, and you know, etc. You know, even even the line of the dialogue where they mention Americans, like I think two of them were two of the lines were mentioned by T.J. Miller, you know, who voiced um, Tough Nut in How to Train Your Dragon, recently voiced in Big Hero Six, you know. He's you see T.J. Miller as his, as Cade's best friend, um, uh, Lucas, you know, he's like um. When they, when they, when they, like when they mentioned when they when they found us the Transformers, like we should call the whoever you know it's the American way you know or when the when the the military they're they're taking them hostage and like let go of me I'm an American you know <laughs> like uh, Michael, Michael 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 well I'm not sure it's Michael Bay but it's written by Ethan Kruger so maybe it's him also his doing it as well you know I mean they pushed the whole thing the whole the whole American flag and the American thing to so much you know okay okay I get it, you know. Don't need to keep on keep repeating it more than once, you know. Uh, and in the whole thing with the, with the um the character also the other Autobots, you have John Goodman voicing as Hound, as the this military looking um Autobot, you know, with the one that's smoking a cigar, you know. Uh, Ken Watanabe as another like a samurai one, you know, called Drift. And another Autobot called a uh, Crosshairs. Bumblebee still is still there, you know, still, you know, using this, using the radio to talk, you know, which I don't know why in this, in, this far into the game they still can't make him talk normal. Uh, the stupid, the uh, what are the stupid things? Um, other character, other other characters I did, I did not care, I generally just don't care about, you know, the plot is stupid. Oh, goes all the opening scene, you know, the I guess for the creators, you know, the ships, they're the ones that caused the, the, the extinction of the dinosaurs, you know, by using, turning them all into transforming looking statues. And anyway, speaking of the dinosaurs, of course you get the, of course you get the Dinobots, which pure, which just wasn't, that's was another thing, you know, this film is over, this is film is two hours, this is two hours and 45 minutes, and that's another thing, this film just dragged on and dragged on, it was just way too long, you know. It just it, it was a long, long, boring, 
dragged on two hours and forty five minutes, you know. I'm just stuck to those. Man. Man. This is making me sorry to lose my voice because I'm talking so much, you know, out of rage, you know. This is, it was, it was also, it was, this film was just way too long, you know. The Dino Bus don't even come into what, what, what was it? Maybe within, not over two hours, maybe within 40, for the last, for the last 45 minutes, I don't know. I lost count, though, but they don't, they don't come in towards the end, you know. Um, they don't do, they don't do nothing when they're in their, you know, like their, you know, like in the warrior form. They don't do anything with that, though. But, um, Transform, uh, Transformers, um, like, uh, like, um, which is, I thought, I thought would, would have been, would have thought would have been better, because how the film ends, you know, because when Optimus Prime goes off the space, gives a message to the, the creators, tell them to leave Earth alone, you know. Maybe that would, maybe that would have been a better film, you know, because just having, because, because they always, once again, they put in the background, you know, focus on these human characters, you know. I wish, I wish they just put just Optimus as the lead, you know, no more of these human characters, put them in the back row instead of the front row, you know. And they have Optimus Prime getting, getting his ass kicked throughout the film, you know, until I guess that like, gives the final blow to lock down, you know, cutting his face in half. Oh, also he kill he kills Kelsey Grammer to save Mark Wahlberg, you know. The whole thing, the whole thing, the whole thing, the whole film just sucked. You know, I knew it would be, and this is also the the this this is the worst rated uh, Transformers film yet. You know, worse than um. Uh, the second film, Revenge of the Fallen. But yeah, the, the, but the film still made over a billion dollars, and exactly, I, exactly, I knew it would. You know, I predicted it, and I was correct. And as it has eighteen percent of Rotten Tomatoes, which is like one point lower than the second film, which is which was nineteen percent. The film, with the film, the film, the film just sucked. You know, the film whole thing sucks. You know, Mark Wahlberg. I'm not the big, I'm not the biggest fan of Mark Wahlberg, though. Of course, of course, my brother. He keeps, he keeps, he, my brother. This one, this annoying thing, he keeps on saying, my brother. You like this film. You like this film because you, you, you saw that you saw the film twice. You know, when you, so you like this film because you keep on talking about, it, talking about. It, you know, I'm talking about because how much I dislike the film. You know, not because I don't, because. It's, if I keep on talking about the film, that means I like the film. This week, it's what I'm saying, you know. I don't. I hate. I hate this film. Okay. I've had it up with the Transformer films. Okay. Transformer. Transformers Five. Mark Wahlberg coming back. You know, comes out in 2016. I don't. That film sucks. Okay. But if I. But I told him before. If I. If I put myself in his position, you know, I would say, oh, I do like this film. It's the best in the series. You know. I was like I do, I, like I do agree with this thing. One of the best of the back here, the best Transformers ever. That's that's that that's if I was that's if I was him, you know. But I'm not. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I was yeah. I said it was cool to see. Look, yeah, cool. The the the, the how the look of the Dinobots. Yeah, they look cool. Okay, that's another like one small midget smidge of a praise, you know. Because because I like dinosaurs though, but that doesn't matter though. They didn't do they didn't do much at all, you know. I'm I'm done with this. I'm done talking about Transformers: Age of Extinction. I thought like I, I thought it was the worst film of this year, but well, but it's not. Okay, so that's number four. Transformers: Age of Extinction sucks. Bottom line, I'm done talking about it now. Number three, and I'll fit in because this is the third. This is this is the third entrance in the series. Expendables three. I, I that's why I keep on going on with this. You know, I'm I'm over two hour two. I'm over two uh, an hour and twenty three minutes more than my previous video. But I don't care. I'll take the key all those two hours as long as it takes, you know, but as long as I get everything out of my system, my mouths make it worth it. So Exp Expendables three. I always I always like I always like uh, where is that um point I'm trying to point out to it. Yeah, there it is. I'll oh I'll always like the first Expendables film. I always had a lot of fun with it, you know, especially from the opening scene of you know, with Dolph Lundry, you know. Warning shot <laughs> missed a little bit below the waist, you know. Badass, you know. You know, and and I always enjoy the, the cast, you know, you know, um, with the, the conversation with Bruce Willis, Arnold Schwarzenegger, and um, Stallone, you know, and Dolph Lundgren's fight with Jet Li, you know. I always enjoy the first film. I always will be. So the second film, the second film, it was, it was really disappointed in, you know, because the, the, they made the film too jokey, you know. They, the, the, they made it, they made it, make it more like a comedy than action, you know. All the jokes with, um, 
what was the, what was the well one of one was supposed to, of course one of them with the with Chuck Norris with the, throwing one of the um Chuck Norris um jokes you know which is which I never liked I never I always hated those jokes you know of course my my brother cause I was like my brother he loves those jokes he thinks it's just because it's Chuck Norris you know I don't care I don't care even though it was nice to see Chuck Norris though but I just hate I just hate those jokes they were not funny they were really annoying. So yeah, that's that's one of the humors I did not like. Throwing one of those Chuck Norris jokes, and of course one of the jokes they they made it too jokey because um, cause they, that's uh, that's how they treat Dolph they they treat Dolph Lundgren's character. They keep they treat him as they treat him as one big joke, you know. Like all the thing he's 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 real good at chemistry, you know, and how he takes this thing out, he just sneezes into the napkin, you know, and he tries to make the stain it looks to try to make a homemade bomb to put his rock slide, and it doesn't, and and how he snores, you know, it's talk about. They just, they just treat him like he's a, they just treat him like he's a, like he's a fool, you know, basically. And uh, of course, uh, of course, with our Schwarzenegger, the, the, over the, 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 the line that I'm always so, I'm, I'm sick of now. He keeps on saying, "I'm back, I'm back," you know. I'm getting tired of it. And of course, they say it once, but they try to say it again when they're at the airport. And he's saying, "Bruce Willis, I'll be back." And Bruce, uh, Bruce will saying, you know, you, you know, you've been back enough. I'll be back this time, you know, and. I'm done, and of course they keep on saying more, more action references. You know, like um, what is it? What Arnold Schwarzenegger, Arnold Schwarzenegger saying? What is this, Rambo or Yippee Ki or Yippee Ki Yay? You know. But, 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 uh, but I like, but things I liked uh, Jean Claude Van Damme as the villain, though. But even though, despite him, the fight between him alone was disappointing, though. That was that was a good thing. It was nice to see Chuck Norris, you know, but. The film was just disappointing, basically. And here, and the number, I was not looking forward to seeing number three, you know. And lo, lo and behold, I was correct once again. I have just about to have, I just about had it with the, with Expendables three. Especially for the, the, the opening, the opening sequence with the whole thing with the train, forgettable, lame. And of course, with the whole thing, one thing I thought was looked though, hopefully it would be one of the highlights was they finally bring in Wesley Snipes once again. And, well. Not, not once again, but they bring Wesley Snipes into the film. You know, of course, he's when he's captured and when they release him. Of course, they had to make that they, they had to make this as a joke. You know, now like how did how did you um why 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 were you in prison for? And of course, he goes he says tax evasion. God freaking damn it! Uh, they had they had, they had to obviously make a joke about why he why in real life he was in jail for. <laughs> So and plus and plus he was was his times was very underused as well. He barely gets to demonstrate all his martial arts skills, you know. Well, so he might he might, he might as well not be in the movie at all. He does it, if he doesn't get to do that, you know. He barely does his martial arts moves in the film, which was extremely disappointing, you know. And of course, and then and then of course, okay, well, there's another another good thing. Um, they introduce the, 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 the mastermind of this thing is is this guy named Stone. I forgot, I forgot what's it. I forgot how his last name was, but his name was Stone something, you know. And that was played by Mel Gibson. That was, that was another good thing. Uh, Mel Gibson, I like. I like him when he played. I think he gave a better performance when he did it, played a bad game, Machete Kills. You know, I think he did better job than here in that film. Because because Mel Gibson, his character, he was one of the keys. He was one of the co-founders of the Expendables. Him and Stallone, you know. And I did like the conversation when he was when they captured him and they were driving in the van. Him was talking to Stallone, you know. Okay, I like that conversation with how we explained, you know, about 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 what what happened between him between him and Stallone, you know. That was another good point. I'll, I'll get to the get to the, the good points first. That was that was one good point with Mel Gibson. Another good another good thing that I thought was good was Harrison Ford. Like how when 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 first when Harrison Ford first comes in and talks to Stallone, you know how we, not how we what we how how well he talked, but. How the way he how he how he talked to Stallone when he, when he first meets him, you know, I did I did like that I did like that scene. Harrison Ford had a good scene, you know. So yeah, so so Mel Gibson, Harrison Ford, that's the like, the two actors I I uh, I, I, I would think it was, was good in the film. So so, so, so Sylvester Stallone, I just wanted to, especially all the the three films he I hate I absolutely hated in 2013 was you know was a bullet to the head and. Grudge match, and then the, what was the dumb escape plan? 
I said, I, I'll always be a, I'll always be a big fan of Sylvester Stallone, you know. But I'm just I want to see no more after films from Stallone, you know. Just especially also Arnold Schwarzenegger. Arnold Schwarzenegger is in a nothing role in this film, you know. Miles not be in it, you know. Of course, he says the 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 another over the top line, the, the line that everybody likes, you know, the get to the chopper or whatever, you know. I just, I'm getting sick and tired of hearing the, those lines, you know, because. Everybody says by especially my brother, he says it all he says it all the time, you know, and it's just, it completely defeats the purpose of what it's to the humor, the the the, the well, great line classic lines of those what he did with Predator and um, the Terminator, you know. I'm tired I'm tired of hearing those I'm, hear, I'm tired of hearing those jokes now. I'm tired of it. And then yeah, uh, so he aren't supposed to in a nothing in a nothing role. Um and then it also for the most because in, in, in most of the most of the chunks in the middle, there is no the original uh, no the expendables because uh, they want to get these younger these young these younger team members, which I never gave a crap about. You know, a rat's ass basically. I never gave a rat's ass about any of these younger expendables characters. You know, especially one guy who who climbs and he falls. You know, and flies into a CGI with a CGI parachute. You know, because they, that's why that's why they hired him. They hired him because he fell. And another another guy was a military guy. They hired him because he can use his shotgun. Another guy, um, this this chick, I uh, I think she was I think she's a really a UFC fighter, I believe. And either way, I didn't care for her, you know, because they got they hired her because she can fight, you know. And then Colin Lutz's character from the Twilight films, and also played um the Hercules in the Legend of Rennie Harlan's film Legend of Hercules. They hired him because he because he threw because he threw a fight. That's it. There, there, there's, there's your team members. Well, originally they were going to hire Antonio Banderas, who was a much older guy, but they not did, but Stallone does not to hire, him, does not hire him because he keeps on flapping his gums, you know. And that's another, that's another point thing. Antonio Banderas, yeah, we're during, the, during the finale, there he has some good shooting action scenes, you know, like how he does this. But the little thing is, he, 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 he doesn't shut because he keeps on flapping his gums, you know. Although later on when they're walk, walking through the woods, he's talking to Sloane again, but I do like that, that scene where how he talks about how he was, like, the only survivor of a, of a, uh, of a... He, he told, like, this small story with the, the Sloane where they're walking through the woods, and I think, okay, that, that was that was a good scene. Okay? Yeah, so, like, a, like a few good scenes, but the, but the film was as... Uh, was a, was a pile of nothing basically, like a whole bunch of the bunch in the middle without the expendables, focusing more on this younger group and these, these younger team members, which I never gave a rat's ass about a rat's ass about, you know. Then the film and the film de the film debuted at number four. It didn't do well in the U.S. and it deserves it. I think the I think the budget was ninety million, you know, but overall made over two hundred million, and it's the and it's the least success and it's the least successful. Um, Film in the series. It deserves to bomb badly in the U.S. It does. I'm tired. I'm, 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 I'm tired of it. I don't want to see any more Expendables Four. They talk about Expendables. They don't want to talk. They talk about Expendables Four. I don't want to see it. Of course, I think reading online that they, they talk about making an Expendables film with with a team of women. Stupid idea. I don't want to see any more Expendables films. Screw Expendables Three. You know. Uh. It was, the only thing was uh, like. Harrison Ford and Mel Gibson, and uh, the the action scene with Tony Banderas, and that's pretty much it. That's 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 basically about it. Every, everybody else, you know, Dolph Lundgren, Jason Statham, you know, nothing to, nothing to do. What's this knives? All very on very underused. He just gives nothing to do. He doesn't use to use his martial arts uh, moves, you know. Um... Miles will not Miles Miles not be in the film at all. Hate hate when they had to refer hate hey when they referenced the joke with that way he was in jail for in real life, you know. I just, it's just I'm I'm tired. I don't want to, I just don't want, I don't want to see no more. I don't want to see any more of the, the expend any more of the Expendables. It's Expendables three is the is absolutely is absolutely the worst one in the series. Worse than Expendables two though, but. Whatever. So yeah, Expendable, Expendables three. I, I that's one other film I don't own on DVD, but I don't. I don't think I want to own it on DVD. If I do get, I probably do it just for the sake of you know keeping the trilogy, you know, because you know I'm just a person who doesn't like I have this, you know.
you just keep wanting to have like having like, having the like, maybe just to complete the franchise, you know. That's basically why I have this because just to complete the franchise. Maybe I'll do that with Expendables three, keep it to complete the franchise. But I still hate the films. I hate these films. So, like I was saying, I have a lot of films I films that have that that have complete the franchise. You know, that's basically I have the, the, this film for. Like I said, just to complete the franchise. The film still sucks anyway, and this film Expendables three still sucks. That's the number three. <sighs> And now, like, getting to number two, which, which uh, on the, the bowl, like this, like number two and number one, these were films that, that I'm absolutely big fans of. Well, well, uh, the, uh, in the past, you know, in years, over the years, you know. And this, this one was I was absolutely looking forward to seeing because I'm a big fan of this character, and it was just extremely, extremely, extremely. Disappointing, beyond belief. And I was looking for. I loved the trailers to to them. You know, I was ex I was having expected a lot. Of, I expected a good time with it, and I wasn't. This one I do have. I guess like for the, for the franchise though, but this is Godzilla. I was I was so extremely dis I was extremely disappointed with Godzilla. Because I said before, I'm I was a big fan of I'm a big fan of Godzilla, you know. I'm, I, I, I really, I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan of Godzilla, you know, the original, the series, and the whole, all the um, Godzilla films, you know. Of course, there was a few. Of course, there was always a few Godzilla films I don't like though, but majority of them I do enjoy. And I was really looking forward to seeing as uh for like for past of the past like few years. When I heard when I first heard the talks about re redoing Godzilla, you know, I was really looking forward to it. I was looking forward to it, keep on on the updates and what they were doing, you know, what they're planning to do with Godzilla, you know. And so, so ever since ever since saw the first trailer to it, I was really intrigued by it, you know. I was looking forward to it, you know. Um. Uh, especially when, especially when I heard hearing hearing Brian Cranston's voice, you know, talking about it, you know, and seeing and seeing how 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 he look, how, how especially the design. Of, actually, this I didn't. I was I was I was I was really fine with it because my brother was he saying, oh, he looks so fat, you know, he looks very fat, you know. I didn't, I did not mind this look, you know. I think how close to how it was with the original. Of course, the original look of the fifties is always gonna be the best looking, you know. But I was fine with this design, you know. And I saw I saw the film. I was extremely disappointed. I think a while back I saw what I did. What I did. I said I said I would like it no matter what. Uh that was that was that was that was months ago. I don't know what I was saying back then. You know, I look at the film now. I was just really disappointed with it. I'm really really disappointed beyond belief because I'm a big fan of Godzilla. Because look at this. I'm wearing this here Reptar shirt. You know, for the Rugrats because that's where they referenced him from. Godzilla, obviously, you know. It's just disappointing because, well, yeah, I I like Brian 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 Brian, Brian Cranston's character, you know. I had I had I think I the, the opening of the film you felt I felt sorry for him, you know, because he lost his wife and what happened, you know, and how he explained, you know, because uh, this was not a national disaster, you know. My wife died here, and it's going to and it's going to send us back to the Stone Age, you know. I like Brian Cranston. He was he he did a good gave a good performance because I was hoping because you know because you know, cause all the fans because of the fans of Breaking Bad you know when the film the series ended you know probably looking forward to seeing how he was. Well, personally, I never I I haven't seen still haven't seen Breaking Bad personally you know. Ooh, I never saw Breaking Bad. I'm sorry, I was just never interested in Breaking Bad. I'm sorry. This is my this is how this is how I am is my opinion. I never I never seen Breaking Bad you know, but I do know how popular the show was you know how popular. Brian Cranston was with the character of um White, you know. That, that, that was the, the last that was the last name of the character White. Um, there, there he is right there. And so there were people were probably looking forward to seeing because he's in the Godzilla movie, and it was and how how it was what thing was in the thirty minutes of the film and he dies. He dies like with like with the first thirty minutes of the film. And he never, and he never, never, he never gets, and he never sees Godzilla, you know. 
He never saw Godzilla. He gets, he gets, he gets killed by this monster called the Mutos. M-U-T-I-O-S. Which these, these looking, these looking things... I don't think they were, they're, I don't think they were, they were not that good looking, you know, basically, to be honest, you know. And... It's uh, Brian Cranston's son, played by Aaron Taylor Johnson, who was horrible, you know, and Elizabeth Olsen, I didn't, I did not like, which is funny because now, like I said before, they're 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 husband and wife in this film, and, and Marvel's um, Age, um, Avengers: Age of Ultron, they're they're brother and sister because they're Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch, which I think they'll probably give a better performance in, the, in that film than this, you know. Like I said, I'm willing to give them a better chance because I'm looking forward to Avengers: Age of Ultron. I think that I think they'll probably do better than 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 the performance in this film, which it ain't saying much though. But still, you know, I'll probably say that you know, but I'll give their performance another chance because they're playing superhero superheroes, you know, instead of these characters, you know. Aaron Taylor Johnson, he, I, well, like I said I'm not a fan of Kick Ass. I'm sorry, I'm not a fan of Kick Ass. You know, I did not care for him as Kick Ass. You know. I, n I never I, Aaron Taylor Johnson was horrible in this, and so was Elizabeth Olsen. Um, Ken Watanabe, I like Ken Watanabe, but he's given nothing to do except talk about Godzilla, and all he does is just um. Well, a lot of times he's just staring off of where where it's happening, you know, and um, you know, saying the the line, "Let them fight," you know, and that's all he says. You know, he talks about Godzilla and. <laughs> he talks about the love of Godzilla. Then that's that's the that's the that's the biggest main main problem with this film. Um, I believe like, it was a, an hour in. You see no Godzilla. That was it. An hour. Like, this film is this film was over two hours, and so yeah, it, this film was like over is over two hours and one hundred and twenty three minutes, and the in the first hour there's no Godzilla. Well, maybe not now the exact hour, but maybe less than an hour. But I will say what fifty fifty five minutes, you know. When he makes his maybe makes his full on appearance. While, while I'm watching, you know, maybe when he first makes his full on appearance, you know, with the Hawaiian airport, you know, he sees the, the camera's zooming back up, and you see him, you know, giving his his his, his infamous roar, you know, and then all of a sudden, cuts away. It cuts away. You see it on the the, the like a, a a brief five second fight on a TV, and that was, and that's it. I'm like, that that was it. That was. <laughs> wait, wait, and of course, of course, my brother says it because he because he saw saw this film as well, and he says it's Godzilla. What was it? Godzilla versus people or people? The movie, you know, the mil the, the army army. The movie, you know, because. <laughs> he gets that's what they focus smoke that's what he said that they that's what they mostly focus on the army the army less than Godzilla and yeah I agree with them you know they could they focus on more on the p the main the people human characters more than Godzilla you know and Godzilla especially in the title alone it's called Godzilla you know and an hour and over an hour well not over an hour but an hour of the film you see hardly see no Godzilla Brian Cranston, the only the only likable human character, and he dies in thirty minutes. You know, it is, and he doesn't even he doesn't even see Godzilla. He, he gets he dies from standing on the thing, and then the the Mutus push this thing over, and he dies from it. Although I know there's another thing. Well, yeah, I, all the little cool things like I mentioned before, I like to how I like how they referenced 1954, how the start of the original movie was, you know, whether it was released 1954, and the opening like the the song, you know, dun, 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 dun. I like that I like that piece of score. I do like that piece of score though. I do to be to be perfectly honest, I do like that. Dun, 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 dun. I'm doing a parallel job, but saying that's like that, but that piece of score I I don't mind, you know. Um... But the film, the film was like, it's it's the film was called Godzilla, and you hardly see Godzilla. Um, looking at, it, I would say, usually appears on less than less than ten minutes. I would say, ten minutes was actually no, actually I looked up on uh, a, a, a there was a YouTube video, you know, and it shows uh, this uh, this film every single appearance that Godzilla has, has made in the movie, and it turns it comes up to eight minutes. 
yeah, I, I, yeah, I just, because I was curious on how, how much, on how much, uh, Godzilla, uh, screen time Godzilla, uh, went, and I looked it up on, on YouTube here, and there was a video someone made, and they put it, like, inclu including the scenes where Godzilla is swimming in the ocean, you know, and, and for the, for the, uh, the whole time, on screen time, that's what Godzilla appeared on, was eight minutes. I'm like, really, eight minutes of screen time in a two hour, in a freaking two hour film, that's called Godzilla, and he's barely in the film. I'm just extremely, extremely disappointed in the film. And the film, and before my, before the follow the way, before, before I fill this all the film, you know, I noticed it's a very, it got praise, you know, as a 73% on Rotten Tomatoes and has a higher rating on, on IMDb, you know, and I was like, when I heard this before I saw the film, I was like, okay, you know, and then and I watched her see the film. I was like, okay, then why does the film get the praise? Even even the even the back of this cover, even the back of this cover right here, this is the Godzilla, this is the Godzilla fans have been waiting for, by Tony Hicks of San Jose Mercury News, right there. And as I, I'm a, I'm a big fan of Godzilla. You know, over the years I've been a big fan of Godzilla. And you know what? This is this was not the Godzilla I was looking for. I, I completely disagree with that that quote there. And, um, and also on the front cover here, an epic showdown. No, the, the, no, the, the showdown was not epic, you know, because we're doing, when they got the fight in San Francisco, he, in San Francisco, he got, he got his ass kicked, you know. Falls down too many times, you know. And we, he, kill, he kills, like, the first move, the one that flies. He kills one with his tail, I guess it gets impaled to a piece of a building, and then he falls down afterwards of that, you know. Um... And as and and, and and I I I will still I will still say this I will still say that I was that I will still say this you know that to be, to be perfectly honest the only cool scene is when the only cool scene that's when when Godzilla grabs the the last the, the big Muto the last one the the female one is because it's technically grabs it and just and uses his he uses his atomic breath and shoves it down the monster's throat decapitating it that was the that was that was a totally awesome scene. I'm being perfectly honest on that. That was a that was a really cool, kick-ass, awesome scene. But that's it, you know. I like that scene though. <laughs> Even after that, you know, he's I guess he's he's exhausted. You know, after all, he falls down once again. <laughs> yeah, and and the, the effects you have. This film had a budget of 160 million. Yeah, the effects of Godzilla. Yeah, how the way he looks, he looks cool, you know. But he gets his ass kicked a lot of times. I mean, he falls down too many times. And also, the the fact that when he made his first full appearance, it cuts away for the first time, you know. And then when the, then the second time, when he's ready to bow with a flying one, as a, as Elizabeth Olsen was going to get into shelter as the doors were closing, you know, as as was the teaser trailer, doors were closing, which actually they ch they changed it because. And the other, in the in the trailer, where as the doors are closing, you show Godzilla just forming like this. But they, they look like they changed it because as the doors are closing, as the Godzilla's getting ready to fight, it closes, cuts away a second time. I have never seen a Godzilla one, uh, any of the Godzilla films that cuts away, that cuts a fight scene away twice. Not even once either. But just like that, you know. I I I just I don't I don't understand I just don't understand why would they do that. Twice they cut, they, they twice they cut a fight, they, twice they cut a fight scene, you know. And when they get to the big epic finale, is which is not epic, it's extremely disappointing. Godzilla only does only one cool, op, 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 totally awesome scene, and that was when he uses atomic breath, shoving it down the last Muto's throat, decapitating it. Because remember, because he, he's he was he was holding the head, you know. And that's it. Extreme. It was. A, this is why I put this in number two because it was. I was looking forward to it to to throughout the early year of 2014. You know, well, also throughout the a few years when I first heard about this film. You know, and you know what? This a lot of people uh, probably uh, probably, uh, probably a lot of people could get pissed at me. You know, but I don't care. Let me hold on a second. Where is it? Right here. Right here. This is film. Is this film is miles better? I'm dead serious. I know people are gonna, a lot of people, people are gonna get pissed at me, but I don't care. 
at least at least the Godzilla in this film had more screen time than this film. The, his what was it the hour at the hour mark when he made his first full appearance? But then within the, within the first twenty minutes he made his first Godzilla made his full full on appearance in the first twenty minutes of this film. Twenty minutes. Twenty minutes. Twenty minutes appear in the first first appearance. Twenty minutes. First full appearance in this an hour. And this film was all. This film was also two hours long, and this went at a much faster pace. This film dragged on, talking more about the human characters, you know. But here they they they, they talked about how to st how to where to where to find Godzilla, how to find Godzilla, and where to, how to stop him, you know. Better casting. Matthew Broderick. As much as people trash talk about Matthew Broderick in this film, he's he's much more better than Aaron Taylor Johnson in this film. I'm sorry. This film had this film had. And this barely had Bill had barely any action in it. This one had a lot of fun had a lot of fun action in it when the military was chasing Godzilla trying to stop him. I had a lot of fun with this film. I, I also I also did an hour or review of this film. Why this film was so goddamn underrated and why it's one of my one of my favorite films of all time. Because I grew up I grew up with this film. I saw this I saw this in the theater back 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 in nineteen ninety eight and I had a lot of fun with it. I still do today. This film is still is still miles better than this. This one had better. This one had better action, better spare action, and more screen time of Godzilla than this film. Much better human character, except for um, probably except for um, uh, Matthew Broderick's girlfriends, you know. But still, you know, she that would probably still probably be better than Elizabeth Olsen, you know. Much more good characters like Matthew Broderick, um, uh, Jean Jean Renault, you know, as the you know help was help wants to wants to help Matthew Broderick, you know. Um, Hank Azaria was a very funny character in this film, you know, because this film also had a good has a, had a good sense a good sense of humor to it, you know, especially with the scenes with Hank Azaria and those, some of the lines he says, in which were fun, you know. And and and, Roland, and as much as Roland, Roland Emmerich he said he regrets making this film, I'm sorry, he did a really good job, you know, he did really he did really great with this film. The budget was used more well in this, you know. Of course, they used they still use some old school special effects, you know. Especially, you much people trash talk about the babies, you know. They still use practical effects with the babies, and sometimes with a, a little bit of practical effects with Godzilla, you know, himself. And much people trash talk about how the, how he looks like this, you know, more than this. I don't mind this look at all. I think it was a different t a different look on Godzilla, and like it look here, big, loud, and fun. I had a lot of fun with this, you know. And I'm sure probably people are gonna get pissed at me, but I don't care. This film is this film was this film as much as this film gets so, this film gets so much shit and trash talk, okay? And much much more a better pace, better characters, better action, more better more screen time of Godzilla, you know. I I will just never get it. Yeah, and yeah, I know people will like the film. That's fine. I know I know I know my um, I know a lot of people will like this, and they'll probably still say this is better than this film. I guarantee it. And I'm not. I'm not. Um. I, I. 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 I respect people's opinions. I do. People like the film. That's fine. You know. I'm not changing people's minds. You know. This is. This is my own opinion. You know. Especially expressing how much disappointment I had. I. I was looking. Well, I had the anticipation. I was excited for this film, and I was extremely disappointed. You know. And then, I, and then I look at this film and say, why does this film get so much trash? Which I do understand. I do I do understand why people hate this film well, you know. I do understand that, though. But to me, I had a lot of fun with this. I think it's still, I think it's, to me, it's miles better than this film. I know. I understand all that. I, under I understand all the hate, all the hatred for this film. But from my preface, I had a lot of fun with this film because I grew up with the film and I still have fun with it today. I can watch this ten times over and over again, and I would not be bored with it. And I'm still never bored with this film. A lot of fun with this film. So, yeah. C completely, completely effing underrated, you know, and it's one of my, also one of my favorite films of all time. This is by part of my name on this channel, I'm Jurassic Godzilla Fan, you know, because I'm preferring because of the Godzilla to the this film, you know, but still. But I, I always enjoy the, the, the original, I will always enjoy the original uh, 1954 Godzilla film, and even that film, they 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 focus more on Godzilla more than talking about the the human characters in this film. You know, I'm not talking about Godzilla. You know, Godzilla 1954 always be a classic monster film ever. Always for a love of that film. So yeah.
So yeah. Godzilla, 1954 classic. This film, completely, completely underrated. This film, this one gets praised, and this one gets, this is a two-disc set right here. Barely no, and barely any Godzilla. Eight minutes total. The, you know, and, and check out that, check out that where we find the video of all the clips and scenes of Godzilla in that film. You can see eight minutes total. So yeah, terrible cat, terrible, ter a horrible cast except for Brian, except for Brian Cranston. Also, David David Strathern um, is in this just for not much though, but I didn't mind him though, but he had, he's given nothing to do. Um, but Brian, Brian Cranston, best actor, but he dies from the 30 minutes of the film, which is extremely disappointing. Especially all the anticipation of the of the series, how his, and he ended the series with Breaking Bad. You know, looking. Anyone fans of Breaking Bad will be disappointed how 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 is how his um screen time is in this film. So, Godzilla number two, just extremely disappointed, and. And then, of course, the number one film, the number one film for me, which is fact, in fact, is even worse than I is even worse than Godzilla, and I'll, yeah, plus, plus, oh, as like I said, I thought was, this is a film I thought would trans, this is a film I thought Transformers would be the worst film, but no, this film tops it. This film tops it. I know, I know probably some people, I know some people that that put this as, as the worst of this year, though, you know, but. As I said, this is my this is also my worst film of this year. And this is a film I this is a film I did not want to see in theaters, but I'll explain why. This. And I did not want to own this on I I have this on DVD, but I did not want to own it because but I this this this, this was a DVD I got as a gift. I got this as a gift, you know, and I I just want to say here, no, take it back, I don't want this. No, I'm not I'm not I'm not gonna do it. I'll keep it because I got it as a gift though, but I, but I did not want to own this on DVD anyway. But it was nice because you know, family, one of family members gave, gave this to me, you know, as a gift, you know. But you know, I think it was kind of, I think it was, it was kind of an er, er, early Christmas, 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 Christmas present. I keep on stuttering, keep on mumbling and stuttering, studying my words, you know. I hate, I hate this movie. I especially, especially ever, all the everything. All the controversy that this this film or during before this film came out, you know everything, you know with the script and everything, and especially Michael Bay producing it, you know, and everything that's everything that all this thing that had you with the, with the script of uh, the uh, turtles or going to be aliens, you know, and it's everything before before everything of the, of the talk that uh, before this film came out, you know, and and, and well well honestly well. I was I, I was not looking forward to it, you know. Well, it was it was before once I once I heard what the what they're gonna do with the characters, and then I lost interest altogether. And there's another there's another film that this is a, like like Godzilla. I was also a big fan of, you know, especially if you, if you can see right there, you know, the the lighting glare, you know. I love I I'll, I'll always love the original the 1990s film. The, that that film the original 1990s film. But this film, as I said, I, I, I have no, I have nothing, I have no, absolutely no words to say. Because, well, first of all, yeah, the film got negative reviews. Yes, even though this film got na more, a bit more higher, higher rating on Rotten Tomatoes than Transformers: Age of Extinction. You know, this has like a 22 rating percent on Rotten Tomatoes. But, and this film also made. I knew, I knew the film was gonna make. Like I said, I knew the film was gonna make money. You know, and it did a big opening weekend with 65 million opening weekend. It was number one once again on the second weekend, and it overall made like 470 something million, and it's going to get a sequel coming out in two, coming out in 2016. Especially, I, I hate the, I, especially I hate the, I, I hate these goddamn designs of the turtles, you know, you know, steroiding, uh, looking like hulks, you know. They're not, they're not, they're not tourists. You, you put, you, you call them hulks with shells on them. Put a mask on them, and put the shells on them, add a hulk to it, there you go, there's your turtles. I just don't know what to say. 
John, directed by Jonathan Leesman, which I always love, Battle of Los Angeles. But Texas Chainsaw Massacre at the beginning sucked, and um, Wrath of the Titans was boring. Then this this is worse. Now I say this is his worst film yet. And of course, everything is worse with the human you know, with the, with human characters like Megan Fox, who cannot is who who cannot act for shit. And oh, especially oh oh. Oh, especially I love how the how this thing how, what she what she said you know because she the, the reading on reading an article a while back she said um if anyone if anybody who hates this film they they can go they can basically fuck off that's what they said that's what, exactly what she said well first of all you, you don't say that because people have their opinions you know people have their they do they still do have their opinions you know and just say that if you hate the film screw off tell them basically basically, basically to screw off you know. What do you, you know, uh, but uh, so, so, I, I just don't know what to say. She, she sucks, she, she sucks in this, and basically tell the people to, anyone who hates this film, to screw off, you know. There, it's, uh, people have opinions, you know. And here's my opinion. This film sucks, and Mega Fox still sucks, you know, okay. Sucks it, she sucked in Jonah Hex. You know, and she sucked in the, in the two Transformers films. She cannot, she cannot act whatsoever. And it's my opinion, okay? This is all in my opinion, you know. And plus, I, I'm also being over the, I'm being over the top because it's fun to be over the top, you know. Because I, I'm hardly, you know, when but films like this drive me absolutely nuts, you know. Films like these drive me absolutely nuts. Which I don't understand why the film, why films like these can make, make lots of money. And plus, this is, this is also the highest-grossing film in the Nickelo for the Nickelodeon movies. Yeah, this is released by Nickelodeon because you know the, because of the 2012 TV show. The 2012 TV show is is, is is miles better than this. You know, I've grown to I've grown to liking I've grown to liking those um the the 2012 TV show. You know, though this is that, that is that is that is miles better than this film. The 1980s cartoon, I I do I, I always do like the 2003 cartoon. You know I I always I always will enjoy the 2003 cartoon. That's the best cartoon about Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And of course, in all in all the, st the stupid jokes, you know, like of course for what from the trailer, you know, ooh, he's try uh, they try he's he's doing this bad man voice, ooh, you know. And of course, they course throw the course, Michael, of course the thing with the with Michelangelo like, throwing a boner joke, you know. Ooh, my oh, it's, oh, it's a human girl. My shell is tightening. And of course, when they're drinking the sewer, they, they all stood together. And Michelangelo, Michelangelo farts in their faces. Great. T t t a mutant ninja turtle, likable turtles that goes and farts in in in, in their face, farts in their faces, basically. And these turtles are absolutely horrible, you know. And over the and no, basically, almost what action was there in the opening scene? They, they, the, you, you barely see, you don't, you don't see them. You just, you just see, you know, a, one of those big metal crates and gets lifts and throw, th gets thrown at, you know. The foot, oh, the foot, the the Foot Clan. They're like they're basically mil military guys, not being ninjas, you know. Oh, why are they called the Foot Clan? Because they step on you. That's why they're called the Foot Clan. Oh, and the reason why how uh, uh, um, uh, April O'Neil, you know, knows who they are because they used to, they used to be their pet, used to be her pets, you know. They used they used to be her pets, you know. She named them, she, she, you know. They used to be her pets, and Splinter was her was her pet as well, you know. Oh, and the reason how how they became nin became ninjas is because Splinter learned it from a book called Ninja Ninja Mission Martial Arts Whatever. That's how they became ninjas. Oh, it's but it's, it's not like how in the in the original first in the first film how how Splinter learned Mar learned the ways of being a ninja from his master from his cage you know learning his moves and all that you know and get his part of his ear cut off from from Shredder they they probably you know feel this but you know that's how, but that's how that's how they be that, that's how they became interested in that film but here they just read it, they just read it they just learn it from a freaking book that's how they became ninjas. Um, Shredder, well, I mean, so sure, Splinter, I mean, is, is this an abuser, you know, 
he abuses his. He's 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 supposed to be the father. It's supposed to be the father figure of of these of these kids, you know, basically because they're kids, you know. And like I think one of them, he, he uses his tail to wrap around one of the one of their necks. I believe what was it? Was it Leonardo? Or was it Mike? Or was it Raphael? I forget. And I, and I don't care basically. Of course, of course, uh, of course. Another thing, also thing, another thing about um was um the character Shredder, which originally was supposed to be William Fickner, you know, but they got it to a virtually played by it was played by an Asian Asian character, but we just like. I first heard about when William Fickner was supposed to play the Shredder character. I was like, "What?" And I don't like William. I don't. I, don't, I do not like this character, William Fickner, which I thought I'm, I was a little more kind on in his performance in the Lone Ranger as Butch Cavendish. But my opinion after after seeing this film, I, my my opinion totally changed on that. So William Fickner, no, I don't want. I don't, he's just not. He's, he's not. He wasn't good. He was horrible. Will Will Arnett as the camera as April's cameraman. Um, was well, it was a little horrible? He should stick stick to stick to voice acting Will Arnett because I like I like Will Arnett when I like when he voiced the Batman Lego Movie, and especially I I love Will Arnett when he voiced the Missing Link in Monsters vs Aliens. I always love Monsters vs Aliens. Will Arnett as the Missing Link, I do like Will Arnett as the Missing Link, but in, in this film he was horrible, and uh, and also a po a pointless role for Whoopi Goldberg, you know, was in a nothing role as the who appears in two scenes and that's it. And of course, the one of the actions that probably people will talk about was an action when they slide down the snowy hill. It's the, what action is there, you know? They, they, these turtles here, you know, they don't do anything that's mar that's like ninja related, you know, martial arts, you know. Um, oh, like the scene right here where they're staying in the elevator, they're just dancing into it, you know. They're just dancing, you know. Don't care. Um, the shredder. I mean, the shredder. I don't know what to say about the shredder because you know, because you know, the plan, the plan, the whole plan was basically well, probably as some people say it's, it's basically they used like a rip off of the first um, Amazing Spider-Man reboot because basically you know they, they want they want to go out on this high antenna wire just like the lizard you know the high antenna whatever you know tower release it releases gas just like the lizard did and have like um, ends with you know with the the whole thing toppling over like just like the ending of Amazing Spider-Man. Basically, take take the rip off of that ending. <coughs> yeah. Oh man, this, this, these films are giving me such a giving me such a sore throat right now. I'm telling you. But I'm almost done though. So and I'm over I'm over two hours into this on this review. You know, this is the biggest review I've ever did on my on my channel. You know, which is well, it might as well because I, I absolutely hate these movies. You know, God. And also when when they're hanging on the th on the thing, oh, April gets the final hit on on Shredder, knocks him off of the thing, you know. Turtles don't even do that. Well, even though the ending of the the first the first turtle film was was actually a worth of shit because you know how with with Splinter, how he how he how what he what he did to Shredder, he was telling you know talking about death comes of you, Uwukusaki. You know when you die, you'll die you'll die without honor, you know before he can be afraid he afraid falls into the garbage truck, you know. Shredder with that Shredder was a much more likable character than this film, you know. Of course, all the, of course, it has to be a huge guy, you know. Like all the, the turtles and spl all the turtles and the and the Shredder, they all had to be big, huge guys, you know. When I like the first film, they were like almost like human size, average size, you know. And why does everything just bigger? Was the term bigger doesn't always have to be better, you know. I hate I hate this movie. I always hate this movie, but um, I did. Well, this DVD, I didn't want to own it, but I got it as a gift, though. But I didn't want. First of all, I didn't. I, I had. I saw this in the theater, and I didn't want to. Be, but I went anyway because my my friends and my brother and my friends invited me to see. Invited me to. Uh, my friend, my one well, of my friends invited me and my brother to see it. You know, so I had no choice. So so I had, I had to I had to, I had to sit through this, which um. I know, I know my brother, he likes the film, and one of, one of my friends, who was also a big, huge um, Ninja, Ninja Turtles fan, and he likes the film, you know, he he likes, he's, he likes the film, that's his opinion, but I had to sit through this, I didn't, I, I was absolutely right in my opinion, you know, this film was a complete heap, heap of trash, I hate this, I don't care, I'll leave, leave, leave there on the floor. 
this film and this film was getting a sequel. And of course, also because in the sequel they're gonna bring they're gonna bring Bebop and Rocksteady, and also gonna introduce Casey Jones. Elias Costias as Casey Jones is the best Casey Jones. This where whoever's gonna play Casey Jones ain't gonna do jack shit. Elias Costias best Casey best Casey Jones there is. Fun, unlikable. Oh, so the other thing. This film, the this film was being made. I, I remember that there was also they were, they were, they were trying to make a, a fan a fan. There was I well, I, well there's two fan there's two fan films that well, I saw on the on the, I saw on here that um, a fan um, Casey Jones film and it has an appearance by Michelangelo which is actually voiced by the original um, one of the original voice in the first film who played a, a, a voice of Michelangelo. Nice touch, you know, and I like that I like the, the the Casey Jones fan film, you know, and they were trying to and they were trying to make a, a fan. Raphael film that was R-rated and it was called Banished, and they were trying to raise money for that, you know, just like they did with the, the that's trying to do with the sequel for um, Vampire Academy. And this film, and then it doesn't, it doesn't get funded either. It doesn't try to get money either. I, w I would have loved to see that, you know, an R-rated uh, fan film with Raphael called Banished. I would love to see that, but no. But this, but this film made lush, made shitloads of money, and it's getting a sequel. Unlikable characters, unlikable to hate the I, everything I said about the ever said before everything I said before um this film came out, I was absolutely I was absolutely right, you know. <laughs> That's why this is this is my worst film of twenty fourteen. Some people probably put this this film as a list as well, probably as uh, all these other films as well. But literally, at least um there's one thing I also give also um to this film. There was some, there was some decent action in there, you know, like a couple, one or two action, action scenes that I, that I did not mind, you know. I would still say that, there's, that there was more, there was more. That film was over two hours. That film was over two hours and two hours and forty five minutes. There was some decent action to it. Here, there's no action in there, you know. What action? Or well, the scene with sliding down the hill, you know, or Raphael, but when they find the shredder. Also, oh, because Raphael, when they were, when they got captured, the turtles got captured, and Raphael had to fight the shredder, gets his ass kicked, you know, once again. I didn't, mean, I didn't mean to say it once again, but he gets his ass kicked, you know. There's like Optimus, like Optimus Prime and God, Optimus Prime, Godzilla, and these films, you know. Raphael gets his ass kicked, just like those characters. I just don't know what to say, but I don't, I don't want to say more. I'm done. I'm over two. I'm over two hours in this film. Two hours and twelve minutes, you know. Probably people won't watch. Probably watch my review of this, but. <laughs> and, well, if anyone who does stick around to watch my, my review, I would say thanks. Worth my review is worth is probably worth seeing for for your kind of taste, you know. But anyway, yeah. Fuck turtles. Everything I said about everything I I I I've known and said about over over the past or past like year or a half about this about the making of this film, you know. Complete load of trash. Yeah. So yeah. Empty. <coughs> Drink the whole thing. So yeah, let's can you give me guys just just like I did like at the end of my my best films review. Give me just go just get to end up with a with, with a recap. The dishonorable mention was the three films: Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, Amazing Spider-Man 2, and X-Men: Days of Future Past. Then number my top eleven. Number eleven, Sin City, Dame to Kill Four, shit. Number number ten, Vampire Academy, shit. Number nine, Dumb and Dumber Two, shit. Eight, worst horror film of the year, Ouija, shit. Seven, Sabotage, shit. Ro number six, Robocop 2014 remake, shit. Five, Tusk, shit. Transformers: Age of Extinction, shit. Which I thought was the worst film, but it proved me wrong, and I said why. So yeah, that film, shit, shit. Ex number three, Expendables three, shit. And number two, Godzilla, disappointing and shit. And then number one, Turtles, shit, shit beyond shit, 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 shit. shit. So so yeah, see so here, all these. So that's that's my. Uh, 
that's my top 11 worst films of 2014. And I want to say Happy New Year in the year 2015. And I hope you enjoy this over this over two hours and basically 15 minutes rant and rage, you know. This is the longest review I, I've ever done. But it was worth it. It was worth it, you know. So, yeah. So, thanks for watching. Take care. And hope, you know, and I, I hate and I would say fuck all these movies. And I'm sure there's plenty of ones I, I have to probably look forward in the future by the end of 2000, by the year, by the end of 2015. I don't know what, I don't know what films to expect that I'll, that I'll, that I'll hate 2015. But on the positive side, I wonder what films I, I wonder what films I would expect to like in 2015 as well, you know. So yeah, positive and a negative side to it. So yeah. So that's basically it. Yeah. Thanks for watching. Take care and stay tuned on the next review. Later. And once again, Happy New Year. And I hope you enjoyed my list of my worst ones of 2015, top 11. Hope you enjoyed my list. Hope you enjoyed it. And check out my best films of 2014. Hope you enjoyed my list as well. Like I said, all matter of opinion. You can like or dislike whatever you want. You know, you can you can disagree, you can disagree or agree. We're all I'll you know, to treat all people as opinions with respect. You know, disrespect my. But you can also, but just also respect my opinions and my, and my list as well. You know, it's like it's like probably like, like I did with um, like I did with my previous list of 2000, of 2013. You know, but it's all a matter of opinion. Like or disagree. That's all there is to it. So yeah, so thanks for watching. Take care and stay tuned on the next movie review, whatever. Once again, happy new year and see you later. Bye bye.